Ready, Lisa? This meeting is being recorded. Hey, Go Knucklers. Welcome back to Go Knuckle Talk with Flo. I am Flo. And of course, my amazing, uh, amazing, I don't know what other tags I can use, Lisa Nolan Hafner. Hello. Hi, Michael. So uh, who's our sponsor for our show? We have a special sponsor tonight. It's tonight's show is brought to you by American Overhead Service. Um, it's owned and operated by Geraldine and Dan Holt, and they live in Plainview, Texas. And they started out the service um, 37 years ago as a fledgling small company, and they've grown over 37 years to be the premier and in-demand residential and commercial overhead service, not just in Plainview, but in West Texas. And um, they're in high demand, so be sure if you want their services that you schedule it out far in advance so thank you American so Service. yes thank you yeah. absolutely so we have a first <clears throat> and what i mean a first is we have another school that it's outside of plainview of course uh but let me go ahead and, uh, we have um four three angry red football players from the magical 78 team who been recently inducted to the plainview hall of honor congratulations guys Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Um, awesome. And of course, we got probably the most consistent best Texas team from 65 to 95. Uh, uh, you know, winning, losing maybe no games, one, two games. I mean, these guys were the, the badasses in Texas for almost 30 years. And of course, I'm talking about the Midland Lee Rebels. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh my bad. Oh, my bad. Uh, oh, my bad. Oh, oh, yes. No, that's a heck of a way to kick this off. Yeah. Oh, my <laughs> but, <laughs> I'm me. kidding. The Odessa Permian Panthers. Not only, I mean, one and only Mojo. Welcome, guys, to Go the Panthers. Plainview yeah. Texas podcast. Thank you, Thank Lisa. You. Thank you. Okay, so. Uh, without further ado, let me introduce everybody. We'll start with our guests this evening um, from the away team with the Panthers, Vic Vines, quarterback, Randy Peterson, cornerback, Martin Graves, Raise linebacker, and Doak Huddleston, <laughs> uh, offensive guard. And then from our angry red team, Jay Miller, tight end, Woohoo! Kevin Igo, guard. Don Palmer, linebacker, and we were going to be joined by Kelly Rafer, who is tackled, but um, I think he is not able to make it tonight. Anyway, welcome, gentlemen. So I'm going to go back and call out your name, and I want you to tell me where you're living now in this time of life. So, Jay, I'm going to start with you. Um, I live in Willis, Texas, uh, on Lake Conroe. I've got a house here on the lake. Um, it takes me an hour to get to downtown Houston from here, so... Uh, it's kind of a nice place to, to be, you know, to have 75 feet of lake access and an hour from Houston. So very nice. Yeah. I'm, I'm glad you explained that because I didn't know where that was. I'm um, Kevin. Where are you living? I'm here in Plainview. I hadn't left Plainview. So uh, I'm still here and, and uh, farm ranch, um, raised children here and um, um, just never left the farm. That's a wonderful place to be. Absolutely. Yeah. Don, what about you? Yeah, I uh, I live out uh, east of Dallas in a place called Royce City. It's out on 30. And um, I've retired now from Raytheon. And um, I got my grands are within 20 minutes of me. So I do a lot of chasing them. And uh, got bees this year. So lots of getting stung and just do, learning how to do that stuff. Nice. I'm not very far from you in East Dallas, so maybe I can get some honey. <laughs> oh, yeah. That's all open. Nick, where are you living these days? I'm actually in Lakewood area of Dallas. Been in Dallas oh, since yeah. 19, 1984. I'm by White Rock Lake. Uh, but I'm about to move to a different, uh, different town, a town called Waxahachie, in about six months. Why? Uh, south why, of uh, why south of from, Fort Worth. From Lakewood to Waxahachie. I uh, I am am engaged to a young lady, and uh, we're going to move down to Waxahachie and build a house. Very good. Okay, How, you're my neighbor. I'm in the White Rock area as well. Okay. Excellent. Randy, what about you? So I live in Houston. I've been here since I graduated from UT. So a long time. 
uh, empty nester this year for the first time. And uh, 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 it, it's been all good. I, well, I live in Hempstead, so northwest of Houston. So been here since 97. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Martin, what about you? Well, I am in, I'm, uh, I'm in Odessa, Texas. Uh, when I got out of college, graduated, came back. I've got uh, my wife here and my daughter and two granddaughters, which uh, they're 10 and three. So that's just keeping me alive. I love it. And my son lives in Fort Worth. And so, uh, yeah, that's it. It's uh, Odessa's changed a lot, but it's still, uh, it's still West Texas. Still West Texas. Yeah, I'm still here in Odessa. Uh, uh, got went into coaching as oil field went into coaching. Uh, first part, I uh, explored a couple of colleges, and we we figured we didn't have a lot in common, so I had to come home and finish at UTPB. But I got out. Uh, <laughs> Go Falcons! Two, yeah, oh Falcons, claw them. Uh, got two <laughs> kids in the Dallas area. Uh, I, I retired from coaching two years ago, and I got back into it. Uh, we're coaching now. I'm in a little 3A school, and uh, we're in the playoffs. But since there's only four teams in our district, everybody makes it. So, But anyway, we made a big deal about it. So that's what's going on. Good. Beautiful. Well, before we get into the magical uh, 1978 quarterfinal game in Lubbock, Texas, which was freezing, very cold, Lisa and I were there. Not we didn't go together, but we uh, we were there at the game and uh, uh, as eighth graders, and uh, so we're very young. Um, I want to ask the Mojo guys: Where did Mojo originate for you guys? I know what Mojo means in general, but why? How did Odessa get the get the nickname Mojo? And I've got three theories, and I'm gonna see if you guys know. Doak, you want to take us? You know, whack at this. Well, I've heard a lot of them. Uh, one of the stories I heard was one of the coaches looked at his son, you know, hey, come here, Bubba, something like that. I said, come on, Joe. And then they came up with Mojo. Well, I don't really believe that when I had w one person. And then uh, someone said they came up with uh, just a tradition. Someone wanted to put a hex on us, and they said something about putting their Mojo on us. And then that's – I think where it might have stuck. Now those are the two so, versions I got. So version I've heard was the fuel team, which was basically uh, a bunch of rowdy students that probably were overserved in the in the stadium, started yelling more juice, more juice, more juice, and something good happened. They got a first down. They got a break. They won the game, and everybody else in the crowd thought it was Mojo. So that's. Another version. Yes. I'm sure Vince that, Martin have different ones. Yes. So that's one version. And then Doak mentioned the back uh, Ab during the uh, Abilene Cooper in 1967, some fans chatted, go Joe, go Joe. And other fans heard Mojo. So that's the second theory. And the other one I think Doak mentioned is in 1962, a senior stump play used Mojo magic. So those are the three theories that I found in Google. Yeah. Well, so it's go. Uh, it's amazing. Yep. yep. All right, Lisa, let's start with the questions. Well, I want to go back to that again. So how long have y'all been Mojo? I mean, like, was that like 60s or is that? Well, 60s. Yeah. 60s. Okay, so, so a long time. Yeah. I'm going to – the story in the story there, I think, Lisa, is when did the culture start? Right. So when did that brand awareness – within the city and the, the, what we did. And I think the four of us that were on here were sort of in a unique situation because the head coach of Permian at that time, Gil Bartosh, he won the 72 state championship. His daughter was in our grade. And so we would always go over to their house. And so at a very young age, we were getting introduced to this Permian coach we were playing football. We would go to Friday night lights at the stadium, saw all the kind of religious things going on in the stadium. So it was, it was cult-like in my opinion. We, we didn't know, we thought everybody else did the same stuff every Friday night. And by the way, they may have, right? 
But for us, it started at a very early age. So very young, you were getting inculcated into this culture. Yeah, because for Plainview, it was later. Uh, the Angry Red didn't start out until Coach Sherwood came. 1978. That, that started to build that culture in, in our hometown. But it was, you know, that was in the late 70s. Y'all y'all had a, a much earlier inculcation to the religion. Well, yes, yeah, we did. Football. We were indoctrinated. Just for example, for an example, and Vic, Martin, and Doak speak up on this. When we were in seventh grade, we were running the same plays, whether offensively or def same defenses that we ran in in high school. So it was a process and a system that we that was handed down that everybody learned going into the ultimate system that we were going to run at Permian. We started at a very young age, so you didn't have to learn it. You just had to react and, per and perfect it by the time we were up there. And see, and, the, the thing is, too, is that, you know, I, I was on the varsity for three years in Plainview, and Coach Kirk was there, and, and uh, my, my sophomore and junior year, he changed the office every week. We were running different plays, different defenses, different everything. So we were always learning something new. So it's hard to perfect that. We still were good, but we just it just wasn't the same thing. When Coach Sherwood came in and he the first day he, he got there, he started talking to us. I mean, we were all like, what the hell? This is different. This is fun. So uh that's we started the culture that they have now in, in 1978, just like y'all did when you know in the 60s. Yeah. So well, I'm glad y'all yeah. got that going. No, it was it was it's it was it was something different. I mean, you know, when you're sitting there and you know, we ran like what eight different plays. This was our offense, you know, the wing tee, you can't do much with that. <laughs> well, we we ran the wing tee yeah. and we, we got very we had a lot of variability to that. And as you know, anyway, y'all experienced in the game and even though there were standard calls and we always laugh, student body right, student body left. But there were lots of variations that, uh, you know, Vic could even option off at the line. And and, and it was – and that was a first uh, relative to what we did as a, as, a, uh, as a scheme or an offense. And that's because the coaches didn't think we were very good. We needed every advantage we could get. Well, they told us we weren't very good several times. Yeah. <laughs> I don't think they knew what to tell us, but the thing yeah, is, they said you guys suck. <laughs> no, um, you're too on on I, top of that. So it sounds to me like the coaches for you know pony league or middle school or whatever were in cahoots with the high school coaches, so that you're all fed into the same system at an early age. And I think, well, yes, ma'am, Lisa. Coach, sometimes our coaches. I'm sorry. Uh, no, that's sometimes our no, coaches. Guys. Followed us up from the the middle, the high school, the junior high. Yeah. We had several coaches come through that were eventually in the system that were still our coaches in high school, and uh, that was a continuity that a lot of programs don't have. But sometimes we just had the same coaches go up there as far as they could go, and I think that brought a lot of. I mean, we didn't change coaches a lot at Permian. Uh, not very yeah. seldom did you have a. A, a turnaround at Permian. So uh, that was another advantage because we kept the same philosophy in the same system. Ted, you guys had J uh, John, Co uh, John Wilkins, correct? As your head Good coach. Yeah. We did. <laughs> AG, baby. AG. AG, baby. <laughs> well, hey, guys, let's go to that freezing day. Martin, how cold was it for you guys down there? How cold? Wasn't it like 28? 28. Sunshine, though. Sunshine. No, I don't wind. remember it being cold no at wind. all. The only thing I remember is when we were getting yeah. the first guy on the field. I don't know who it was, but somebody walked out on the field with like 50 black balloons and had one red balloon in the middle and walked by us <laughs> on the field and let them go. And they, I couldn't see where they were tied together. And they went straight up in the air. And I mean, they were, they were, you know, they were not tied together. And that freaked me out. And pulling into the dang parking lot, it looked like they had you, had, you guys had a motorhome dealership on the east side of the stadium. <laughs> <laughs> it was like, you know, we come from a, a fairly wealthy uh, farming community, but nobody had motorhomes. So, I'll tell Jay, you what, we just, were, I'm sorry. Go ahead, Martin. I was Go just going to say, we were, uh, we were way glad to be back there because the last time we were back there, we, we got our uh, we got our butt kicked by Plano three to nothing. So we were really glad to be back. 
at the uh, Red Raider Stadium. So it was a, uh, I don't know, it could have been minus 28. I don't think we were, we were pumped up. You know, we were not going into a stadium that we were going to get beat again. And, you know, that's just how we felt before the game. And uh, it was just. Uh, how much did y'all know about us? Did y'all know we had 3,000 yard backs? Yes. I yeah. mean, we, know- had, we, we knew your faces. We had y'all up on the, on the, uh, on the bulletin board. They had programs. They cut out who who was the guy across from you. I mean, I, I mean, yeah. By the time the game, by the time the game started, we all knew whose face was who. Who was the little fucker that was across from me? Because I still have a bone to pick from him because he can't hit me in the, in the head with his, his forearm. That, that that could have been Michael. It could have been my yeah. What position were you playing, James? I played tight end. Yeah, it was, yeah. That, was more, that was that was that Mike was Moore. Moore. Well, he didn't. More. He didn't do it very often. He did it a couple of times, and, and I made sure he knew that that was not going to be okay. <laughs> I mean, you know. Well, um, well, hey guys, our editor, our old editor, I talked to him before, before the show. He he heard a rumor that oh, you Odessa guys were coached to hold on every play. Is that oh, true? Oh, that's bad. That's bad juju. That we were what? <laughs> Coach what? Coach to, yeah, hold. to hold on every play. No. Nah. No, I'm just you know okay. that that's that's I don't remember, one funny I don't remember thing. being held, I, but I remember team. this. I remember this. I had no problems blocking anybody on that line. I, I moved them out of the way. It was easy. I don't know okay. what the refs fuckers were doing because they they were stopping us. <laughs> you were just so you're saying up. that, that hey, I, I, uh, you were just setting no. them up for the linebackers to make the tackles. Well, well I got, yeah, no lie. There you go. There was well, no, you I, mean, I had no problems getting the linebackers. I had no problems. And then I know Igo took care of his people. <laughs> so, Jay, that, and, uh, that's so, a great... Yeah, anyway, it's, let's talk to Igo. He hasn't said anything. So, how the weather affect uh, you guys, uh, you, Kevin? I, I can tell you, uh, that wind was brutal. I, I, there's no two ways about it. Oh, it was I, windy. I, I, I don't it remember. It was cold. It was, Man, it was I, the, the wind. wind probably affected me more than the cold. Uh, and... You know, the thing I remember about playing Odessa is, and I don't remember which coach it was, but he he must have been, all he could talk about is this per- Permian Mojo. And I'm telling you, I'm the youngest of you guys by a long shot, by, by a year. But <laughs> it, it, it made a big difference for a young kid because because I'm, he said, man, you guys are going to have whiskers. Y'all are going to have kids up in the stands. <laughs> We're all going, oh, man. <laughs> I think that was our second field to play on that was AstroTurf. Am I yeah. right on this? Yeah. I mean, the, 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 you guys grew up in that culture. And, and we didn't. Every time we got, when we went to El Paso, that was a brand new, that, that was a whole new world for us. So everything that was coming at us was brand new. You guys were expecting it. So, uh, you know, uh, I, I, I'm i not going to say I was intimidated because I, I think we played better than the score showed. But but I do know I saw you guys as bigger than life. And I, I don't know why that is, but I, I just. Well, that's the, what you, I, that's I, what you hear your whole life. Wow. That's what we've heard our whole lives is Permian Bay is, is, is uh, uh, you guys were the were the in the little Southwest Conference. You know, we played Midland yeah, Lee that Southwest year. Southwest Conference, yeah. We played Midland Lee and y'all. We those are our only two losses were Midland Lee and y'all. What was the Midland Lee score? I don't remember, but it wasn't bad. 14-16. Uh, yeah, we. So we, y'all we, think we held? They they came out with uh, coat hangers, right? <laughs> <laughs> Damn Lee hangers. Rebels, you you can't trust. Them. <laughs> now we have a, a defensive tackle who's one of our good buddies, and he even admitted. To doing range. some of the stuff he did to our running backs, he admitted it, and we all started laughing. We said, "You know, you I, dirty I gouging in the pile, all the good stuff that yeah, always like, happened yeah. that everybody wanted to talk about." That's like it was in junior college. I mean, you know, Navarro had the guys that had the coke tabs taped into their gloves, their 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 uh, hands, and they get you in, in the in, in the uh, the dog pile where they tie you, and they start cutting your fingers or cutting your your legs with those. Damn. I mean, Vic, it, are you silent? Are you asleep, Vic? No, I, I, I'm, I'm locked in here. <laughs> he never got to see any of that. But they had to catch him first. He probably wasn't fast. Anybody get caught doing that and get tossed out of the game? 
the only one that got tossed out for us was Kelly Raper, and he's not here. You know, he 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 it, he mutilated somebody. I, I, what game was that, Kevin? Do you remember? It was Harper. Harper, yeah. Because Harper is the game that I hit the guy in the chest and broke his sternum and flattened my face mask, and then Kelly got thrown out because he was beating somebody up on on the yeah. line of scrimmage. Not a kid. <laughs> I, I will. I will say this. I talked to Coach Wilkins yesterday about Plainview. I said, what do, you, what do you remember about this game? And he said, well, we had played Fort Worth Arlington Heights the previous Friday night. And they went out to, to scout your team in El Paso. You played an El Paso team. Mm -hmm. And he said the wind was blowing like 40 to 50 miles per hour. There were big boxes flying over the stadium. It was shaking. <laughs> it was shaking the press box. And Coach Wilkins said, we knew whoever, you know, whoever got the ball, whoever won the flip was going to win the win the game. So y'all kicked off to El Paso team. They went three and out, and the punter punted it backwards. The wind was so strong. <laughs> and y'all went, it was 28 to nothing after the first quarter. Game over. I don't know what the final score was, but I'm sure y'all came into our game pretty confident. What was the final score of that El Paso game? I don't remember, but I do. I've told you the story, but I mean, y'all might might have heard it, but you know, we had a running back that we called Mule. He was a backup running back, and our Oscar Oscar uh, was his name, but Mosley, yeah, Mosley, but his teeth pointed for, forward, so the, all the all the black guys called him Mule. <laughs> on our trip up from on our trip from Plainview down to down to uh, El Paso the whole way. <laughs> <laughs> they kept saying, they kept saying to him, they said, Oscar, Mule, don't you be eating on that, that, that grass on the side of the road out there in, in the ditch. So we're like on the one yard line, get ready to go in and score. And Billy Williams, who uh, God rest his soul, he's passed away now. He was a, he was a 900, he was a thousand yard back that year, but he, uh, he was in, in, in the huddle and Oscar came in the block and uh, Billy had never said a word in the huddle. Looks up and goes, you don't, don't beat any of that AstroTurf. And we started laughing. It got a delay of game penalty right on, on the, on the one-yard line. <laughs> <laughs> don't get out of that turf. So, don't hey, Vic, uh, Vic, did Coach Wil Wilkins know Coach Sherwood? Yes, he did. Yeah, Yes, yeah. he did. Now, I have a bone to pick with Coach Sherwood. <laughs> oh, there we go. Hey, let's hear yeah. about it. Yeah, well – you know, the final score of our game was 28 nothing. I threw three touchdown passes, and I ran for the fourth. So I was a part of all four scores. I think that pissed him off because I think he coached the North-South All-Star game, and I was first-team All-State, and he didn't invite my ass to that game. Well, I, had to go, I had to go play in the Oil Bowl, and I think, you know, he went down to Fort Stockton and picked this guy named Rick McIver, who oh. <laughs> he thrown for 800 yards and rushed for 300, and he was a parade All-American. I was, I think Coach Sherwood was mad. But, uh, yeah, Coach Wilkins said that, uh, yeah, Sherwood had come from, like, liberal Kansas, maybe? Well, he was from he was from uh, Sherman. But was, but he had, had he coached in Kansas? Yeah, he did. He was, like I said, you wouldn't believe this guy. I mean – we called him the egg with legs. Uh, <laughs> that's just what he looked like. I mean, uh, looked like Humpty Dumpty a little bit. He walked in that first day, and we were sitting there, and, and we couldn't believe that this is going to be our coach. And uh, we sat there and listened to him talk. And he kept talking, he kept talking. He talked about how we'd never won and how all this stuff. And then he pulled out these little red dots, which he cut out with a, one of those uh, little hole punchers. And he made us all. He said, I want you to all put these on your watch. He said, every time you look at your watch, you see this red dot, you know it's time to win. And I mean, by the time he got through talking, we were ready to tear the field house down. And, uh, you know, it just amazed me. But Good you know, motivator. Yeah, it is. Yeah, it's well, funny. Well, let though. me get the Odessa's Permian perspective. Did you guys see that as a Japanese uh, uh, symbol, the dot, red dot, or no? I, no. I have no idea what you – we had no, no. idea. What well, we didn't, we didn't know about that. Uh, we were prepared for them, though. I mean, okay. our coaches got us prepared. And it was a – I mean, shit, I don't – that big defensive tackle y'all had, I believe it was, that some bitch was strong. I mean, he was fast. But, I mean, we got on him. And Martin had to – Martin and I and Chris Soap switched out a little bit. 
because they needed a bigger punch at guard. They put Martin in there, and then I would play a couple of guards. But that defensive tackle, uh, man, that sucker could go. He was strong. Don, do you know, do you know what he's name. talking about? Don, Kevin Woods? Yeah, I think he's talking about Woods. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin, Kevin Woods. Kid. Kevin Woods? Kevin Woods. Yeah, Kevin that's Woods. that's him. I remember Kevin his name Woods on the right. He pa- he's Kevin. passed away also. He, yeah. Yeah. Oh, man. I, yeah. He's a really good guy. Have you all lost a lot piece, of uh, teammates? Do what, Don? Have you all lost a lot of teammates? Seem like we've lost quite a number for being as youthful as we are. You know? yeah. Yes. Yeah. We've lost a few. Well, Kevin. Well, Woods you know was... the uh, the linebacker y'all talk about, or that we we mentioned, Chris Soap. He died, so he's he's passed away. Who else? Uh, Greg Lamb. Enri- Enri- Enriquez died, right? Our defensive end. Yeah. Yep. Yep. And uh, but Lambert's still kicking. Yeah, that's the Both one I remember. Brian, I talked to him. I, let me ask you. Let me ask. Let me qualify this. I mean, I was at, at in Lubbock at uh, recruiting with Texas Tech in the end zone there, and uh, I was talking to Lambert. And uh, this may y'all may remember it different than I do, but he said you guys beat the hell out of us. We were so sorry we had couldn't play the next week <laughs> because uh, and y'all didn't. Kelly Raper again, who's supposed to be here, who didn't was on the sidelines, but it was like six minutes left in the game. And he said, he, he walked up and he said, you guys, we've got six minutes and so many seconds left in our high school football career. Let's go out and kick some ass. And we started not hitting y'all badly, just hitting y'all hard. You were holding. Harder than we, harder than we had been. <laughs> now, we didn't hold. I can promise you this. We didn't hold. I don't think we got a single holding penalty in the game. So, there you go. But you know, we. You, you, not you, almighty. You know, now, all right, boys. I remember we had to hold our damn shirts and then have our elbows out there. So blocking like that. I, I, well, I don't know, but I, I remember one linebacker. We were running our student body, and I came around the end, and he and I met. And uh, I mean, he not we. I stood my ground. He's a lot bigger, but I stood my ground. The next time I come around there, he was running at me. He was gonna knock shit out of me, and I cut his legs out from underneath him. And he goes <laughs> all the way back to the other. Our linebacker. I mean, I mean I I I'm going talking, low, baby. I think you may be talking about Don Palmer. Is what I think you're thinking about. <laughs> yeah, you're talking to one of the guys here. Oh, I spent, I spent I, a lot I of time it. laying out flat because my te- my feet have been taken out in that game. I, I saw that happen so many times. So many. Times. You, you know, guys, I watched the uh, the whole game that uh, uh, the, uh, at lunchtime at. Uh, uh, that 1978 uh, uh, Permian film, and it does have the whole game. And I could swear there's only four or five drives total for each team, for both teams. There was a lot of punts. I mean, a lot of threes. I mean, there was two touchdowns. There was a long pass. I wrote my notes. There was uh, the first was a touchdown because Plainview had a miscue the first play and fumbled. Oh, yeah. That's, that's yeah. one of the things that I wanted to ask is. Yeah. How much did that affect you guys when we fumbled on the first play? Uh, well, it's well, it, that, it, that's it always put a little spot. fire in our ass. Yeah, I mean, I mean, that's a that's a tone setter right there. Yeah, I mean, that, that put a little fire in our ass. We're on the I nineteen know, yard line, and we go down know, and. Hold on, Vic, go ahead, Vic. Go ahead, Vic. I'm just saying that we, you know, we fumble. You fumble the ball on the nineteen yard line, so naturally we're going to score. I mean, we and scored you guys a lot did. Of points. We scored a lot of points that year, and we go down and we run our, you know, our off tackle, and then I, I throw a little five yard pass to to John Meary, our wing back, and we're up, you know, seven to nothing already. Yeah. And I don't, re- you know, if there was wind, I threw touchdowns both both ways, so it must not have had that much wind. No, it was some wind. Well, yeah, uh, the first because you guys get the ball first. Uh, Mojo, did, Odessa did. No, we did. Uh, no. no, 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 no. Yeah. I just watched the film. I watched the film today. And so Odessa did, had it. No, no, uh, yes, because they punted. Uh, well, but let's talk Vic, about you those threw punts. it. You threw it, huh? Let's talk about those punts. So, you well, I'll, I'll, punt. before we get there, uh, <laughs> you threw up, there was a wide open guy and you hit him in the numbers. Don Murray. That first drive and he yep. dropped it. Yep. Murray. Murray. Yeah, yep. I mean, the, the, it, the, it, the our defender, defender fell. Yeah, our tripped. guy fell. Yeah, and he was, was a right here. It was a fifty-yard touchdown. Yeah, if he catches it. 
Yeah. You know, and, and what the, and the interesting thing is, John was a two way starter, awesome high school football player, very yeah. talented, and Absolutely. he rarely dropped balls. Yeah. So that was like wow. So, and we could have, and that was the first series. We could have gotten down about that, but we don't. We've been in, you know, kind of been in those situations, and 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 then we caught the break that when we punted to you guys in that first snap kind of went our way and in tight games when you have when you're playing at that level that far into the playoffs you've got great teams you need those breaks those are those are emotional you know they they, they cause all kinds of stress well, it pissed yep. me off because I, I you're i had your defensive end on the ground kelly had his person on the ground kevin probably did the same thing the hole was wide open we had Royce Coleman, our three thousand, I mean, our our, our our all state fullback was going to get the ball, and they dropped it. I'm like, what in the hell are y'all doing? Mm -hmm. I, I was I was you know blocking downfield, and I heard the gasp. You know, I don't know if y'all heard that, but I mean, I heard the gasp of like the ball hit the ground, and all of a sudden you hear that noise. And I'm like, oh shit! Turned around, and went, oh my god, they have the ball. Yeah. And then I saw y'all score, and I was you know, yeah. What do we do now? I mean, it well, was we fun. were. I know we keyed on their fullback. I, don't, I think y'all had less than hundred yards rushing. Yep. And uh, but y'all stopped Royce like that. That's what I. That's what I'm curious. Yeah, about. And that's one thing, Kirkham. Time. Kirkham. Uh, I mean, we focused. I remember focusing on that big back, uh, and we knew that if we could limit him, Arbor then we Davis. had some other action. But that's he was a. I mean, he was a well, train. Urban Davis. We had yeah. Urban Davis, who was uh, he he played wing back beside me. And then we had uh, Royce Coleman as fullback, and we had Billy Williams as, as a wing back, as tailback. And I mean, they had three thousand yards. I, you know, they were just incredible backs. Urban and Urban went. Uh, Urban went to play at UT. Urban, was a touch, Urban was graduated a touchdown from... maker at, at UT. He yeah. anytime they got down to the goal line, they put Urban in to go to go score. And Randy, so, you don't uh, remember that, but I mean, that, that's that's. I don't know if you, do you remember that at all, or uh, no, I do. You know, it was it was fun to watch him and another guy that we played against at Abilene Cooper, Terry Orr, who was Terry a Orr was huge back. Woo. We, it was not fun tackling him. He played there as well, and, um, and Dewey Turner. Yeah. I mean, Dewey Turner. I blocked Dewey Turner. We played Escada. He never he never got out of my. I mean, he was. I had him taken care of all night. Uh, but I mean the the. Uh, the guys, it's, it's fun to see the guys that we played against in those kind of positions. So, yeah. But no, Urban, Urban was was a good guy, and and uh, um, but you know when we were blocking double teaming together, there wasn't anybody going anywhere. Yeah. So I got a question. So I, I got, go ahead. I was gonna. Go ahead. Sorry. I, I was gonna just I, oh, go, go ahead. ahead. Oh, I got a question, I, and and I, I I first time I've seen the film on the Odessa. Uh, Plainview game was this week after you sent it to us, so thank you. But there were a lot of drop passes. Yes, there was. Yes. And, and I was just curious. I don't remember y'all being a passing team, and maybe y'all were, and I just didn't ever pick up on it. But I, I was, I was just amazed at how many drop passes there were in that game. So, so Vic set a passing record. He had the state record that year for total passing in the entire state. Okay. He threw for seventeen hundred yards. Okay. Well, I say, and I, I just didn't remember seeing that in when we were preparing for y'all. So yeah. I, that was yeah. when I hey, saw well, the drop passes. I was hey, going, Pete, who, who, who took uh, Stony Case past you? Is that Stony? Yeah. Yeah. Nick? Stony. Wow. Well, I don't know if it was Stony, but you know, I had yeah, a guy named was. Roy Williams playing wide receiver, and you know, the di demographics of our school changed, so. You know, if you throw a one-yard pass to Roy Williams and he goes 99 yards, that helps your stats. But <laughs> let me let me let me answer Kevin's because typically we were wing T, student body right, student body left, threw the ball maybe eight to ten times a game. So I guess after my junior year, the coach, the offensive coaching staff said, you know, we've got some people that can. You know, we got a quarterback that can throw, and we got some good receivers. So, but we didn't throw. I mean, we threw maybe 20 times, two or three games. In that game, I think I was 9 of 15. Yeah. So, that was a lot. Yeah. That was a lot. I mean, 
We didn't. I wish we'd have thrown more. I wish we'd have been wide open, but nobody was wide open back then mm -hmm. at all. But poor Arthur Jefferson, they figured out the run and shoot. But everybody else in our district was running wing T and running. We we weren't big throwing teams at all. I, know, I only, I only I caught 18 passes. More, I was expecting more runs out of you guys. And y'all ran the ball well, don't get me wrong. Yeah. But I, I was I was floored because I just didn't remember it from the game. How many yeah. times? Well, well, I noticed. Horse, go ahead. I, I was, go ahead, Nick. Our horse was Greg Lambert, number 18. And then Greg was, was one of one – I guess he was the, the only sophomore that was on varsity, Randy. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. He, yeah. He, Nobody he is, ever – The only one. Going. Yeah. Yeah, and, and I was talking to Jay about this through text because Jay started on varsity as a sophomore and maybe even as a ninth grader. But if you started on – if you played on varsity as a sophomore in Odessa, you were a freaking stud. We all played JV. So Greg was on varsity, and then we got up there. He was our running back. Of course, he went on and, and played a tech. But, you know, Greg was a man among boys. You know, Doak was a man among boys. Doak in the third was grade. 5'8", 163 <laughs> as a senior, but in sixth grade, he was 5'8", 163. Well, hey, uh, that's you, you know, and uh, hell, I gave him hell. I gave him as much hell as I possibly could. But I knew I, I, there wasn't a lot of colleges knocking on a 5'8", 165 guard's door. So I had to find something else to do. Well, I want to go back to Marvin. Uh, you were going to say something about the punts, Marvin? Well, I was just going to – I was just going to – that's okay. I was just going to say we had a great punter, uh, a young man named Greg Rodriguez, and he – I mean, that's all he did. He punted – you know, we'd go out on the field and go through defense, you know, individual, group, and and team, and we did – we flipped over and did offense. I mean, and all he would be doing was kicking balls. I mean, kick, 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 it didn't he? That's all he did. But I, I mean, the only way Greg can kick a great punt is have a good snap. So uh, you know, I was, I, I was snapping those balls to him. <laughs> I was wondering where you were going to go with this. <laughs> well, he hey, was, God, but, I, I, but I, I'll say, I'll say it. I mean, you know, the wind's blowing and all that. I mean. Greg could kick the ball, so that I, there's no doubt that that helped us. No doubt. Hey. Um, I want to go to the because uh, I think Plainview drove twice, and the first one uh, had a good drive. It was at the end of the uh, almost at the end of the first half, and you when you guys tried a long field goal, mm -hmm. uh, uh, the last play, and I I couldn't tell the the was the, the the ball have a chance, and I think it was a uh, let me write a fifty four yard attempt wow. in cold weather do any of you guys remember if the ball traveled at all it it i i don't it didn't really get to the end zone <laughs> somebody okay. hey somebody tell tell them about a no, no we're not, not we're not all right, going on. <laughs> our other kicker was robert orosco and he was uh now robert it will kill you anyway uh Dope, this is yeah, being all he was and he wore a watch <laughs> on his arm during practice, and Coach Wilkins say, "Robert, what time is it?" And he go, three minutes, Coach." And uh, you know, and that's about. But Robert was uh, our two kickers, but Robert was something else. He was a psycho. They tried to take him out on one kickoff. Uh, I remember on the film, and he forearmed the guy, knocked his face mask back into his face, and kept running. And I just, <laughs> uh, well, oh, don't mess with Roberto. So. <laughs> He was crazy. We didn't have any of those guys. Did y'all have, uh, have turf in high school? We, no. We, we had the nicest grass in West Texas. Yeah. It was soft, perfect. Barrett Stadium was awesome. Awesome. Yeah. They took good care of it. They had that oil money, Lisa. I know. Well, I was just asking because, you know, I would imagine it's different going from grass to turf. It, it, it is, and it's we like had that, the how option. How did that impact your game? I mean, you know, I want to ask that to both teams. Like, did it make a difference? I mean, especially when it's cold. It could be almost right. like concrete. Well, in, in 19, the year before, 1977, we're 13-0, and 0, and we go and play Plano at Jones Stadium, and that's the first time any of us had played on turf. So I remember being real excited about – those 
Nike shoes with little nubs, <laughs> your little nubs. Yeah. Yeah. And, and got new shoes. Out, cool. I mean, you're gonna you're gonna run faster. I run about jump higher on turf. I mean, on on turf than on grass. It's a faster surface. Right. But I remember just being so excited because we got new shoes. You know, we're gonna go <laughs> play on turf. That's what they do in college. That's what they do in the NFL. Well, that's funny because I was playing in basketball shoes. They were just this. <laughs> adhesive is it those little nubs i mean I had really wow. what you have con you had the converse <laughs> no i had the high top high top pumas on on, on the, the, at jones Puma. stadium because all I mean, right yeah and i Pumas. didn't have any problem you so see the difference lisa between odessa and plainview plainview had to buy their own damn shoes <laughs> no we had, the cut got some was, chuck uh, taylors y'all need to raise some money <laughs> we we've got plenty of money but the thing is is that uh <laughs> They gave me. They asked me what I wanted to wear, and I said, "Well, will the will the basketball shoes work?" And I said, yeah. "They said yes." And I said, "Well, I'm going to wear those," and I did. Well, and, I, and uh, uh, Randy probably knows about this. What's about five years ago? Katie built a seventy million dollar stadium for the high wow. school. Yeah. Seventy or seventy seven million dollars for a high school stadium. It's unbelievable. You know, we yeah. <laughs> just a side note on that. So after we left. Odessa built a really nice stadium for both football teams on the north side of Odessa. And it was considered an architectural kind of big deal. I mean, it got national awards. It had the, it had the field that kind of uh, was vaulted, if you may. So you, you get uh, runoff. If you get weather, that kind of stuff, it was turf. It was a bowl. It was a big deal. And, um, it just is amazing from right after we left, and I call it dinosaur days, to today, the amount of money that is spent on these stadiums are, is incredible. And it's funny you say that because, again, we were just, we were just uh, back in Plainview, a bunch of us for the uh, induction into the Hall of Honor. And uh, we had, we, the, the Plainview Stadium, the, the, the seats are still, I guess the seats were wood when we were there. Now they're metal, aluminum. But the field is is astroturf, and I mean, we never had anything like that. I mean, you know, we played on. Oh, I didn't know that. Either. Oh, yeah, it was grass, and we played there. Right. When do they? Do you know when they? Uh, I have no idea. I just yeah. know that they changed it. But I mean, no, we played on grass. They they took a lot of care on it. Uh, I remember when Coach Sherwood, um, you know, one after one of our our games, you know, we didn't you, know, you didn't get the trophy after the game. You get the get the trophy later in the week. And this is another one of these things that he did with us. He he brought a y'all. I don't know if y'all y'all can remember which game it was, but they had a helicopter fly into uh, over our stadium, and they came in, and landed in our stadium, and brought us the trophy from the week before that we'd won in the playoffs. I mean, he was just such a master of That's the. That's cool. Uh, that would have been cool. That would have been, been real cool. cool. We, you know, we he just kept doing stuff. I mean, this guy was incredible. So that's that's better than what our head coach did I, when we. We let a team in our preseason score a touchdown opening kickoff, Efrance Murphy, and he and they go up seven to nothing. And the that following week after I think we beat them sixty three to seven, but he basically came out and said, "I'm not coaching you guys. You're not worth my time." And so Kirkham, you heard that name earlier, our defensive coordinator. He coached us the next game into the following week with all the coaching staff, and it was all mind games. It was all to get us motivated because we weren't worthy. We needed to get to a higher level. And it, it, it's interesting the buttons they could push with us at such at that time in our lives. That's incredible. Well, I mean, we didn't have anything like that. I mean, you know, we, you know, the, the year before, like I say, the three or two years before when I played for Coach Kirk, I mean, he was, he was, he was a tough guy to play for. I mean, in fact, I was, I went out for a pass one day in practice and, and, uh, I asked him, I said, can I square off this route and, um, uh, go back towards the inside? And he grabbed me by the face mask and started spitting in my face and calling me all kinds of names. I've never had anybody do that to me. And, and, you know, I walked off the field and quit that day. And it wasn't long before all the coaches were at my house saying, no, you can't do that. But 
um, you know, that's the difference in, in, in a motivator and, and a, a dictator. And Absolutely. I can promise you, Coach Sherwood was the most incredible man I've ever met. Um, I know he, he died of cancer and he came to, he came to Houston one day to go to MD Anderson and he called me and Kelly Raper because we lived here. And he said, will you come have lunch with or dinner with me? And so we met him for dinner at Papacito's in South down by the, by the Astrodome. And, uh, he said, you guys buy a beer. And we're like, okay. And I'm like, <laughs> I'm like, <laughs> I'm like what? <laughs> So he bought us beer and, and Mexican food. And that, that was the coolest thing. I mean, I'd never yeah. you know, been around somebody like that. I mean, that was cool. just so cool. Number one, he called us when he was dying. He called us to come spend time with him and he, he and his wife. Yeah. But he, he bought beer for us and Mexican food. That was just so incredible. <laughs> that is. Uh, I had uh, Coach Wilkins call me and Martin was in on this. I had Coach Wilkins call me in the office earlier in the, in the year and told me that I was going to be too small to do what they wanted to do. So I better do what I can. And, uh, uh, I remember it pissed me off, you know, and the, and the way he put it, you know, it was like, you know, just get rid of your ass, you know? And so anyway, we, uh, went on through that. That was some of the things our coaches did. Uh, not all of them, but coach Wilkins was a, a, a mind kind of screw guy. He'd get on you and he'd make you feel like shit. And uh, I guess he thought that would motivate you. And, and then he would you know, every once in a while build you up. But, yeah, they, it was uh, for us guys that were on the cusp as far as size, uh, you know, I knew the ultimatum. And then Martin went in there, and they had to put Martin in there. Some of them guys, uh, 255 pounds, and I weighed 165 pounds. I mean, physics is going to take over at some time. So, <laughs> yeah, but I didn't want to give up. I wasn't going to give up because, shit, those are my buddies. Yeah. And, uh, you know, it's made me go, but I knew the outcome. So it was all right. But I thought it was pretty shitty him telling me that. So I wanted to piss him off. So, anyway. <laughs> hey, you Mark, that? Thing I wanted to mention about about our upbringing in Odessa. And, and Dope joined us in seventh grade. So he was at a different elementary. But I was at – and the same elementary with Martin and Randy from grade one. And so we started playing football in the fifth grade. We were the Gonzalez Steelers. Terry Bradshaw even came to our school and gave a little motivational speech and handed all our players. I was a fourth grade. We were fourth graders. I yep. wasn't on the team. But he handed out a little Pittsburgh Steelers symbol, or the little Pittsburgh Steelers emblem. So from the fifth grade to the 12th grade, let's just say we play 10 games every year. That's 80 games. Of 80 games, we lost five games total. Five games. So we we didn't know what it felt like to lose. And, and when you're in Odessa in fifth grade, you know, which is what year would that have been? So we'd have been – 72, uh, years old, 70, so 71. 72, 72, 71. Okay, so we're the, one of the best teams Permian has ever had was the 1972 state championship team. They're, they go 14-0. and 0. They've got eight Division I football players, including a guy named Joe Bob Dazelle, who I think is the best player ever out of Permian all time. And so we're growing up watching, and all we want to do, we're totally buying into the sport. All we want to do is grow up, play for Permian, and win the state championship. And and then we you have all these all state guys from 1959, and you walk in the locker room. All you want to do is you know you try to be all state. So we were conditioned. And then as Randy said in seventh grade, we're running the same offense up until senior. And what we did, and Doke can verify this. Uh, our coach Wilkins didn't he handpick the junior high coaches? Dope. So that that's not usual in no, any it, town or it's school. Not usual. He's handpicked these guys, and they're good coaches. They're seventh grade coaches, but they're really good coaches. They end up being varsity. Well, well, let me, hey Vic, let me add. I hate to interrupt Vic, but if you'd gone to Nimitz, you'd only lost three games. I mean, uh, Burnett, if you'd have gone to Burnett, you'd only lost three games. Yeah, you Still were three. saying well, Nimitz. I think you yeah. got CT. The guys that went to Nimitz, yeah, yeah. the guys bastard. that went to Burnett, we came up, we only lost three games. Yeah, whatever. Uh, whatever. Well, hey, guys, I want to uh, 
with, you know, think about Kurt Sherwood, and of course, Jay and, and Don and uh, um, Kevin will, will agree. He brought our community together, and I don't think our that ever that ever happened. But he brought the community again. He brought the band together. I mean, it was um, that's why I keep saying a magical year. Uh, playing for Odessa, though, for Mojo again from '65 to '95, the community probably expect you guys to win every year so how was that it was that a lot of stress on you guys to to Uh, always i don't i don't know no i mean look at that i'm going by the movie i'm going by the tv show i know it's all hollywood shit maybe but we didn't know i don't know i mean hey hey okay wait a minute so we do good as sophomores we do good as juniors and then or no excuse me our sophomore year, the the they don't win. They don't even go to the playoffs, right? Yeah. Our, 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 so I mean, I don't know. I mean, they may say no pressure. I felt I felt like I wanted to go to a different. I wanted to go to a different level, you know. And, and we got we get beat by Plano two years in a row. And I I know how y'all feel. I was going to say this a while back. If I had a game, I want to go back and play again. I know which game it is. It's the Plano game. And y'all probably feel the feel the same way. Y'all want to yeah, kick us. y'all's ass. And y'all want to y'all want to play <laughs> us again. I hear you. I hear you. Uh, I hear that. I hear that. And uh, well, I don't know. I mean, you know what? So after we get beaten the semis twice, then the next year we're gone. Everybody's gone to college or whatever. They don't even make it to the playoffs. I mean, that that's a that's that a was bad, a sin. That's a bad well, yeah. feeling. You did yeah. not want to be the team that did win. It didn't, didn't, didn't go. You did not want to be that team. Yep. And there was internal pressure. I don't think we felt pressure, you know, In like confirming we need to win. Yeah. We just we just wanted to win district because back then we all know one team went. Well, it's just like you, you know, just like you blame you guys. Y'all grew up together. We grew up together. I didn't want – the only pressure I felt was not letting my teammates down. Yeah. You, know, okay. you grow up together yeah. and you play against each other. And, hell, you do everything together. I'm sure you blame you guys were the same way. It was your partners. You yeah. know, my parents get on my ass. And it was – if my if my teammates were happy and everybody was going good and we were winning, then that's the guys I was more worried about than anything. And, we and won, Michael, we, there we was – won everything we played in. We won the baseball. We won basketball. We won football. Yep. Yeah. I mean, we had we did a, everything had a, like that. And that's the beauty of a one high school team. That really is. Yeah, it is. That's the, that's the beauty of that because we didn't have that. I mean, when you have a town with two schools. Three. You know, mm-hmm. Well, you're right. We had three. Yep. And those well, guys were pretty good. At but, one point, we had two, didn't we, Jay? I mean, maybe in the 60s. Uh, yeah, but uh, not not when we were there. But, you know, one thing yeah. that you guys you guys are talking about that, that – um, you don't talk about is that uh, uh, the recruiting that went on back in that era. Because, I mean, you know, my father was offered a job in Lubbock if I would come play for Monterey. Heck yeah. And uh, because, uh, you know, uh, you know, that's just the way it was back then. So, and, you know, the, we oil didn't, companies, the oil companies brought engineers. We didn't have it. that. Yeah, we didn't have that. We had <laughs> the zero. Oil company, the oil the oil Jay, had the same guys that started at junior high graduate together. Well, I Jay, know, we, the oil companies brought those guys in. No, they didn't. Jay, no. Jay, we have. I can go back and talk. I can pull out our our senior annual and show you the guys that were starting lineup, what junior highs and what elementaries they played at. Well, and it I'm wasn't not... recruiting with the high school. It was just jobs. The oil patch was on fire. It oh, was great. So it, it just we happened to be in a great spot. We had 700 people in our class. Um, that was almost half as much as Plano. But you know, we you had, know, I, I think I think that it, we just happened to be in the right place, right time. We had a culture, we had a system that was unique, and and it, it, it was very disciplined. I think you said something right there. You said y'all had a culture, and and our culture for the past 86 years was uh second was was about the best we ever did and and Vic I think you said only one team went to playoffs and yeah and so we were 
until Don's class, Don and Jay's class came up. Uh, I mean, those guys had the same record y'all had, and and there was a lot of camaraderie that that had never happened before. You know, we had Lawrence McCutcheon. We we had we had some pretty good players, individuals, but we never had a real good team, and uh, or we had a lot of second place teams, I guess. But uh, but um, but I'll go back to Coach Sherwood, and 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 you know, you guys were talking about y'all's coach. Through through intimidation, Coach Sherwood, you didn't want to let Coach Sherwood down. Had nothing to do with him belittling you. You just didn't want to let him down by not playing well. And there you that, go. That was that. That's what I always appreciated about Coach Sherwood. He was kind of like a Tom Landry. Right? He wouldn't show in motion, but you know the players would know that. Oh, he's pissed. Well, the funniest thing, by not saying anything. That was a big deal for Coach Sherwood, though. With his uh, coaches, I know uh, – I was trying to think which coach it was. was telling me his story. He uh, just was ripping somebody in practice, you know, just getting up and down them. And Coach Sherwood just called him over and goes, how do you think this kid's going to do this if you're going to be ripping him up and down? you got to stay calm. If you're wanting them to stay focused – and know what's going on, you got to stay calm through this. And he just always did that. And kind of like uh, Coach Kirk, you know, he would have let us practice four hours if he was mad. You know, we just stay out there and stay out there. And Coach Sherwood had – he had a – every minute laid out every day. And he could tell you each week, uh, way ahead of time, that's all the time you're going to be out there, and I expect you to go 100% the whole time. Mm -hmm. That's what I want. And he just generated that – uh, attachment to him because you knew he wasn't going to run you to the ground or anything like that. That never happened. It was always, you need to know what a hundred percent is and put it out. Don, Don, I, I'll tell you on Three that story right there. Uh, Royce Coleman was the running back. And every time Royce would take the, the snap, he would run all the way to the end zone. And that just took time out of coach Sherwood's schedule. So the next week, Coach Sherwood said, all right, we're going to play up and, and the <laughs> offense is going to start running from the 50-yard line instead of the 20-yard line. And one of the assistants, I remember my offensive line coach, he said, why are we doing that, Coach? He says, we're not ever getting any reps in because Royce is always running to the end zone. <laughs> so he shortened the field so we could get more reps in. I so love that's, it. A, that's good. That's a good call. Yeah. <laughs> Royce, Royce was an, an incredible individual. He still is. I mean, this guy was so hard to tackle. He wasn't that fast. I mean, now, he did win a 100-yard dash in our district back in the day, but that's only because I didn't run that year. But uh, he uh, <laughs> <laughs> he was he was tough to tackle. <laughs> You know, there wait, was wait, a, there wait, was, I didn't get my boots and put them on. For, I know <laughs> there was a, there was a there was a movie called White Boy Can't Run. Not not only White yeah, Boy. White Boy could run. run. Yeah. Was not so right. hey guys, I want to go. I want to go. Um, rivals. Like, I know when uh, my era with playing football, we had Hereford. I assume seventy eight Jay and uh, Don and Kevin Hereford was still our rival. No. I want to know about you guys. Monterey. I want to know Midland Lee. I mean, you guys were next door neighbors. I mean, how nasty some, uh, can you guys to share some nasty stories between you and Midland Lee? I'll tell you one. So in 1978, they're good. We're good. We go to their stadium, Midland Memorial Stadium. And they have our and, and by the Permian and, head coach. Uh, what's that? They the, have Gil Bart Bartosz Bartosz. was their coach. Oh, yeah, yeah. Okay, so y'all were bragging about Murray. He also dropped a pass in the first possession on that game, which was an automatic touchdown. But anyway, they and, – and we all know this person, Herb Pierce. He's the best player on their team. So we go over there, and it's a dog fight. It's uh, – I think we end up beating them – 14-7. Our fullback, Roger Lightfoot, kind of takes the game over – in the fourth quarter and we have this long drive and I think Peterson got an interception that game, but uh, her Pierce is one of the, 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 he's one of the nicest, most Christian like people you've ever met. He's the, now the mayor of Lampasas. 
but he was a mean dude in high school. And I I get up from one play. I'm on the bottom of the pile. And to this day, I give him a hard time. He tried to gouge my eye out with his finger. And I remember pushing his hand and yelling at the ref, you know, hey, man, this guy's trying to dig my eye out. And to this day, 45 years later, and he's like, well, I just wasn't living a Christian-like yeah. <laughs> he repented. He, he went on and played at Texas Tech, and he's the sweetest, biggest teddy bear you've ever met. But I'm telling you, he was a force. That was – Abilene Cooper was good. We we barely beat them in, in the, our junior year. And then 1978, they had this guy named Terry Orr. Oh, yeah. And, uh, we we, we kind of managed him. Uh, linebacker Martin, you can talk about playing Terry Orr, but they were good. Cooper and Midland Lee were our two big rivals that year. Well, but I, I'll say this one last comment on that, or another comment. Our, I think the hardest hitting game we ever played was always Odessa High. Yep. We barely beat them our senior year, and it was off the charts physical because we had to live with those guys good bad and different we competed in every sport with and against each other and it was mean nasty yes it was yeah i remember we played lubbock monterey there in lubbock and uh george kirk's son rocky was a uh, wide receiver my junior year and uh i'm downfield on a pass play and i look up and I see Rocky down the field. He starts hitting this guy. And uh, I'm like, what in the hell are you doing? Next thing I know, a huge fight breaks out between the two teams. Everybody comes off the sidelines and everybody's fighting. And I'm like, I'm not getting involved with this shit. That little son of a bitch got us in a mess. And uh, I'm, I still remember, I've, I've said it several times, Rocky, why did you start that fight? we got penalties we got sanctions we had all kinds of problems after that i'm like man why but yeah and they and they had a guy named ron reeves you know, yeah he, he was, was good we good he was good we played them in the quarterfinals in odessa our junior year all right oh, Randy. Oh, what did ron Randy. play because i remember playing at tech a quarterback at tech but what, what high school did he play for he played all right all right. right he did i didn't yeah. know that which which okay. i gotta prompt randy to tell this story because there's a there's a famous play that incurred yeah. against Monterey. We're playing them in Odessa for the regionals. It's 110 degrees. And they it's, come down and they're 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 good. Ron Reeves is a damn good quarterback. Damn good quarterback. Yeah. So Randy, go from here. So it this is opening of the game. Um, we're on defense first. We're out in the huddle, getting ready to we're uh we're in the huddle talking to each other. And they're about to they're break the huddle. And our starting middle linebacker starts throwing up in the huddle. And everybody is jacked up. I mean, everybody is ready to rock. And their center breaks out first. And, and Byron turns around. He's got all this stuff hanging out of his helmet. And they're coming to the line. They see that. He's yelling, screaming. And it's kind of setting the tone. And about the time the guy reaches down to put his hand on the ball, he throws up all over it. <laughs> and, and I'm telling you, it, that is a vintage kind of old school. I'm sorry, Lisa, that's probably not fun to hear. But uh, he did make a bad snap. And David Aldridge went back in there and recovered that damn snap. <laughs> and he had that green being on it. He was threw up all over his ass. Slick. I got a question, guys. What do y'all think about this? Tonight? Yeah. This is awesome. great. I yeah. love it. I love we, it. You know, we appreciate the invite, guys. This and this is, is all Jay, by the way. Jay, this is Jay's doing. Thanks, Jay. Oh, well, Go thank ahead. You, Jay. Uh, it was no, great, this, Jay. This is great. I mean, we have um, – this has not happened to us before where, you know, especially another school, we have a 17-person a tech stream that is a daily – living, breathing, you know, core of us that have been together forever. We're always talking. It's awesome. But this has never happened. Meeting you guys 40-something years later is awesome. 46. 46, we, yeah. It, we 46 get to share, years. Share these, you know, our 
everybody's getting to share. I, we, we, we think this is awesome. Hey, uh, uh, you know, Jay, I, I got one for you. This, uh, you were talking about the cold and the wind, and y'all said it wasn't cold and wind. Before the game, I didn't want to wear thermal underwear under my pants, so my aunt went and bought me one of those uh, eggs of – you remember legs, pantyhose that came in the eggs? There you go. <laughs> she goes, Joe Namath wore a pair of those. She, she goes, I bought these for you. And I thought, well, shit, I'll give it a try. So we're in the locker room, and I'm putting those on. And my bus partner was Mark Enriquez, and he kept blowing me kisses. And this was before the game. I looked at him, and I said, what the hell are you doing? He goes, man, you looking good in them pantyhose. Huh? And so we go out there in the middle of the second quarter. Those things, we had the win with us. And I got down to my stance, and those things ripped, and that cold air came through the crack of my ass, and I damn near jumped off sides. And, I mean, that was, that was an experience. That's a great Woo! story. God almighty. That's a great story. So, hey, I want to go uh, – I want to ask uh, uh, Don uh, – actually, uh, Kevin, and just a question for you guys. The other drive, the second drive from Plainview, you guys were about to score, and we threw an interception in the end zone. How – did I mean, how – bad at that feel well howie was howie and, and you guys howie was is is a name that we call scott sherwood our quarterback you know he he was a a good guy and great quarterback and uh you know that was that was demeaning that was that was tough to take because you know we'd already had been been hit immediately by the fumble and now we've got this this problem so um it just seemed like things were stacking up against us. I mean, you know, we pull in the parking lot, all the motorhomes, the damn balloons go straight up in the air. I mean, <laughs> everything the was, wind was like, blowing. That's the mojo. It's in those balloons. But that's go ahead, what Jack. I'm talking about. It was, it was, more, it was, it was unex, it, unexplainable because we had kicked everybody's asses that year. I mean, you know, I'm talking about we beat Clovis by over 30 points. We beat – uh, Amarillo High by over 30 points. We beat Monterey by over 30 points. We beat everybody by over 30 points that year, sure. except for Midland Lee and Odessa Permian. And y'all wear the same pants we do. I mean, you know, by God, I, I just couldn't understand that. And I, I've been my whole life because what happened that day ended our careers. What you guys got to do is go the next round. You guys, uh, so, I'll, some I'll, of us I'll, got, you asked the question how, how I felt about that. I, I was I was mesmerized that they could shut down Royce Coleman. Yeah, is what was what just kept going through my mind. Is I watched the film this week and I was going the holes are there. I mean, we were opening up holes and and, and y'all were stopping Royce and we that 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 had never just like Jay said that had not happened all year, and so so we couldn't figure out why what was going on with Royce or Billy or any of that other stuff, but. You know, uh, I know at the end of that Odessa game, I don't know, we were receiving a – Vic probably tell better than this. I, about six minutes left in the game, y'all just scored a touchdown. Six minutes left in the game, y'all scored that last touchdown. I knew I was at absolute exhaustion by that time and and couldn't figure out why we weren't getting more yardage. So that, that that's what I – Took away from that game. Well, Kevin, what I saw in the when I was watching the film today, it seemed like every tackle was several of them. Yeah, there's hardly ever one on one. There were, but it's like there's two or three, mm -hmm. boom, there to tackle the like, tackle the guy. So, I mean, these I guess these guys were quick. Right. Yeah, there's the ball. So I mean, there was something here. Run the ball, huh? Kevin. Yeah. So, Kevin, oh, go ahead. I'm sorry, Randy. Go ahead. Now I was going to say one, a couple of things that are that are true um, about our program, and um, there, there's two things that occur. One, our off off season program um, is kind of our backbone of conditioning, both mentally and physically, and we get pushed beyond the limit in our off season to see what we're made out of. And I don't, there, there, there used to be coaches that would come in and watch our off season from yeah. other schools around the state just to see what we did. And so that wasn't for everybody that, that helped us. As you were saying, Kevin, you were exhausted in the fourth quarter. Well, we were hitting our stride in the fourth quarters. That was, we were um, conditioned at a high level. So that's one thing. The other thing is, in our practices, and we go back to 
whether we were running the same plays and everything from seventh grade and everything was reactionary, what they preached on, and we you kind of heard us talk about individual defense, team defense, total defense, or, um, you know, group defense, they would make you, you would play, the group defense would play until the, through the whistle, everybody had to be at the ball. If, if one guy was on the ground 20 yards away, everybody waited on him to get to the ball. And it was, it was something that was practiced in the early days all the way through. So to uh, Jay's point, he might have whipped the guy in front of him on that particular play. But there were going to be three, four, five guys that were going to fill in around him. And we knew our troops were on the way. There was going to be backfill, backup. One guy gets him. I mean, none of – well, some of us. I couldn't, I couldn't tackle Terry Orr by myself or Irvin or Royce. But I knew if I just got if I just got a piece of him, I had five guys on their way, and and, 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 I, and, and it I was relentless. That. I saw that because I, I always had a guy over the top of me. Ever play? Uh, I was left guard, and and there were always two or three people coming from the linebackers or the secondary every play, and I was going, "This is bizarre," because we didn't see that in any of the games I remember us playing in. I, Hey you know, Kevin, if you get that initial block, you were off to the races. And so, hey Kevin, mm-hmm. did you ever have any problem blocking somebody one on one with 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 the Permian guys? With the Permian guys, yeah, the guy over me was really fast. Is all I can remember. He was he he was he was a he was a good athlete. He was fast, but no, I didn't have any problem blocking him. He just I, I'm just telling you, there was always two or three behind him that I that's. You know, that's the point. That's the point. Because you guys know Kevin was a big eight guard for Oklahoma State. This guy knows how to block. And, you know, that's – you guys have answered a question right there is how you guys chased after everything because none of us had any problems blocking you guys. None of us had any problems with you guys. But the way that you guys rallied around the ball was something we'd never seen before. Yeah. Well, yeah, that was uh, from an early age. Oh, oh, hold on, hold on. I heard a voice. I heard a voice. I, uh, hey, Lisa. Uh, welcome to the show. Lisa. I waved my hand several times. I'm like, please, shut the fuck up so I can say something. <laughs> and she was a cheerleader for us, by the way. All right. <laughs> Go ahead. I think Wait. there's another component to this game, and that is, and Vic alluded to this earlier, that you'd lost twice to Plano, and I think that when you come into a game like that, you don't have vengeance on your mind. You're not playing Plano. You're playing Plainview. But the idea of losing in Jones Stadium another time is just not tenable to you. Like you're, you know, you have a drive in your minds for those of you that had lost to Plano twice. That you're coming into this game with a mindset like there is no way in hell we can lose again in this situation. And we didn't. Like, we didn't have anything like that. We uh-huh. were coming there to. We were coming there to play these guys. Right, right. We knew we were good. I promise you every day was a new day for us. Right, right. But these guys were on a mission to not lose again. And so I think the mentality Let me, I want to say something first. Uh, Remember Coach Tomlin was on our show, Lisa? He he says, he believes one of the reasons that our, our team didn't win is because of the experience. It was our first time being that far in the playoffs yeah, sure. where Odessa has been there before oh. and that's what that was one advantage of of, of Odessa is, is the, the lack of experience for you, you guys John am I correct or or is coach uh um I just forgot his name uh Tomlin. anyway oh, Tomlin yeah. was is he correct on oh that's definitely one of the components because we just there's a like y'all were talking about your mental side of the way I thought about Permian after playing it and just the way you played as compared to other teams we played and seemed to handle is that I always assumed that you guys, when y'all came out on the line and you got ready for a play, you had already made up your mind before that moment that you were going to win that play, not the game, but each individual play, you just said, I'm going to win this play. And I think, 
the sum of all those really piles up when you're playing y'all. And, and at that, that day it was like that. Cause we were like Jay was saying, and Kevin, it just, the relentless, you were so relentless <laughs> in, in every facet. And there wasn't like somebody catching their breath or not dogging not, it in not, any way, you know, it was this yeah. intensity that came now, across. Now I, 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 you know, Don, you being the defensive player, let me go back to my notes. The first draw, the first TD uh, for Odessa was because of the fumble. The second one was a long drive. The third uh, was uh, a punt from uh, like our like the ten yard line. It only went twenty five yards, and there was a clip. So they started. You know, uh, I'm sorry, it went thirty five to the thirty five. There was a clip. So. Uh, Y'all scored on a short, uh, uh, at a good field advantage. Short field. And, and then the, then I think that's it. Oh, and then, then there was a 48-yard a bomb. Yeah. I mean, you guys held them pretty much. There was just those, those miscues. I mean, what yeah. – what, 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 uh, well, But I agree with Kevin that the Vicks passing that day, that was different for us. Because we played, like y'all said, we played a lot of running teams. There, most people ran. Yeah, uh, and then the 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 amount of passing you tried and did that was really kind of different different for us. I thought the uh, the the other thing I saw, Don. Yes, you guys played together as a team. I I, I, I can look back on that and I appreciate it, but I can also tell you, I don't remember. Don Jay may remember some other teams, but. You guys uh, had a uh, y'all had a chemistry. Y'all had a uh, uh, y'all had more better players than most other teams in West Texas that we played. And most that's what one or two good team players. It seemed like y'all had eleven on each side of the ball. And, and they I had think... to play as a team because they're small. I mean, yeah. you yeah. guys are small, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah. yeah. very yeah. seldom did I have. Uh, well, I did have a few one-on-one, -on -one, but I mean, everybody I played against was bigger, but the way I was conditioned and the way I, you know, brought up, I didn't give a shit. Uh, I was getting after you. Uh, I mean, I played against Billy Ray Smith and I mean, gave him hell. We held him to, uh, not as many sacks, but as far as our offensive line, we had run those plays so many times we already knew what we were going to do when we walked up. And so I mean, it, we, it, we it knew exactly crazy. where, what we had to do. So you don't uh, you're the Rudy Ruler uh Rudy Ru Ruliger, uh, Rudiger? Rudiger Rudiger of, uh, of Well, hell, of well, you know, I played with these guys and I I never said to bench. No. Uh, no I never said to he bench. Was I got Rudy. hurt. But I was always a starter and I wouldn't buy a guy going to give it up at even at 5'8". And there no, wasn't exactly. anybody that intimidated us. Uh yeah. really, I mean, cuz we were conditioned not to uh that if it got close in the fourth quarter we would come out on top. And that's how we thought. And, and, we Lisa, just kept that, plugging. and Lisa, that's what I was going to modify about the comment. It it wasn't we were out for revenge. Every game we played, we knew we were going to win. We knew what we had to do. We were prepared. In our minds, we knew what to do. We knew physically we were in condition. We knew exactly. We had faith in each other. We had, a you said, chemistry since – some of it's fifth grade, some of it's seventh grade, some of it's 10th grade, but it was, we knew each other. And, and, and here's the other thing. Permian was a senior dominated team. In other words, when, when we were seniors, I think we had two guys on offense and two guys on defense that were juniors that started. That was the same thing when we were juniors. We played, we got to play a lot and in, interact a lot with the starters but those guys, in, and I described that little huddle in that Monterey game as my junior year. I was not a starter. I, I, I was a fill-in. I got, but I started that game, and it was unique being in there with those guys that were, I call them the immortals. These guys, in my mind, and I think all of our minds, were bigger than life. Uh, Brian Harris, Tommy Sager, all these guys were unbelievable but they were a year apart but their chemistry was unique to them because they had grown up in the system and and ours was unique to us and i think that's the reason why our two years were so good 
and maybe the outliers the year before you're not, they just weren't blessed. They just didn't have everything it takes. Let me, let me mention something about a Permian player. Our center was Jed street. Five nine one fifty nine. No, he weighed one seventy one. <laughs> he did. He weighed one hundred seventy one. Okay, okay. <laughs> he comes up to me at our forty fortieth high school reunion, and he'd had a little to drink, so we got to give him that. He comes up to me, and and only a Permian center would say this. Hey, Vic, you know how many missed snaps we had the fall of nineteen seventy eight. And I went, no. He said, zero. And then he looked at me and he said, do you know how many missed snaps we had in practice? And I'm like, practice? What? You're, you counted in practice? No, I don't know. How many? He said, one. That, that's a Permian center. That 40 years later, he is remembering we only had one missed snap. Yeah, that's just, you don't do that. Yeah, I think I think Jay hit it right on the head. Uh, we, we coach Kirk before us. We changed offenses every week. Coach Sherwood, or oh, my, my junior year, these guys senior year. I think through the first four games we had four plays, and and we perfected them. You're gonna to have to stop our four four plays. Mm-hmm. And it was one of the first times that I remember knowing, just like you said, Vic, who I'm gonna hit. Every play, you get up to the line of scrimmage, you know you're gonna hit. But that was the difference in Coach Sherwood and some of the other coaches is that we had uh, uh, consistency in the offense. So a big difference. Kevin, I always said in some of our previous podcasts that. Coach Sherwood didn't have a degree in psychology. He sure acted like he had a degree in psychology. He was a mastermind, and not just in the game of football, but in his interpersonal relations with his players, his coaches, the community, all the rest of the administrators in school. I mean, he that man was a mastermind. Well, I still remember the one the one thing I remember when we went to go to Lubbock to play these guys. Um, we got on the buses at the field house and we're headed to Lubbock. And, you know, that's a short 45 minute drive. And we're driving down the road. And I would tell you every car, every family from Plainview was on the side of I-27 to Lubbock. They were there. Everybody was there on the side of the road. And um, the last time I remember seeing was uh, a sign that said, the last one out of town, turn out the lights. <laughs> And I mean, that was, that no, was that's cool. That's cool, man. We were like, that is. we were so fired up. Well, we're lucky we didn't just kick the shit out of y'all. <laughs> you know, the funny thing about that, Jay, I mean, y'all, you've already said, Vic, or one of you guys said it, you know, y'all had a school of 700 kids. Y'all yeah. Know what your graduating class was, but 700, I guess. But, you know, what, what we have, Don, 300. And, yeah. Three fifty, maybe. We were we were only thirty four size. We were thirty four uh, students away from being a uh, a three A school. I'll be damned. Yeah, we had. I think our band had three hundred people in it. Yeah, I, and and so right at it. That, that that I think that that goes with that mojo deal that we were talking about. You know, we were sitting there going, "Man, you guys got two for every one for us to choose from." And so, you know, it was just kind of layered in there on that deal. Yeah. But the key, the, the coolest thing about this whole deal is that Plainview High School and that team had 12 people that got college scholarships. And, I mean, you know, there were several D1 players, several D2 players, and like me, I had to go junior college. I got my knee hurt. But we had 13, I mean, 12 scholarship players on that team. We were good. And uh, it was exciting. Abilene Cooper had a Jay, night. hats, didn't, hats didn't off Abilene? to you guys. Y'all were had a – you know, it's funny, going back then, we didn't know what we were facing, right? I, we, we had descriptions of what you guys' stats were, and as Martin or Doak said, picture of you on the, on the board. So we, we knew who you were, but we didn't know that 
you were going to go to college and play ball. We we had a few guys like Vic and 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 Greg and a couple others. Um, but you know what? That 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 was not. It was it was about a team. Oh yeah. yeah. It was not about yeah. individuals because yeah. we beat a lot of guys that were really good players that made it to the highest level, and they're awesome, but their team couldn't function like we could. Mm-hmm. We our, team, down, our team we shut down Terry Orr. I mean, he was a uh, you know we shut we shut a lot of big backs down, and uh, well, look at Louisville that year. I mean, they've got two running backs that go to Tech. They play at Tech, and then you know outside Plano, they were probably the toughest team we played. Yeah, I mean, I, I think you know. Let's just hypothetically say y'all had better athletes overall than we did. Let's yes, just they did. That. Just go with that. But we had ten years on you guys. Oh yeah, y'all y'all had a y'all had a system. We didn't have we, anything. We had a system, and and we all fit into that, and it was relentless. It was tenacious. It was – we self-policed each other in offseason. So, if somebody wasn't going 120%, he's going to get – he's going to get rid of – His ass eating out. He's going to get see, beat that's up. that's the difference. You know, we were in the bar on Monday night. Oh. We, were, we, were having, we were having a beer. How old are you, dude? I wish I with you guys. Hey, was hey, hey, hey. 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 uh, it a kind of bar? You, you, held, you had a lot of dollar bills? <laughs> We were, we were in the bar. I mean, we had we, well, we had drinks on. Well, I went there after practice. I mean, we'd, uh, have, we'd have beers on Thursday. <laughs> Captain night. Hooks. Hey, Captain Hooks. Oh, well, hey guys, I want to. Uh, I want to go do, have a little fun. I've asked, uh, like, we've had other football players on the sh- on the show, and I've asked everyone. You know, you guys could probably remember plays where you guys knocked the shit out of the player in front of you, but I want to know, and I'll start with you, Doke. A, a play, uh, a player that knocked your ass on the ground. Uh, in that game, or any game, any oh, game. Well, any I, game. I, all right, uh, I was a junior and I was on the kickoff team, and we were playing Abilene Cooper. And this was when Terry Orr was a junior, and uh, the other I was a junior, and this guy named Russell Wilson was a senior. But we were the Gunners, so we were running down the field, and. Uh, Terry Orr was in the middle of the wedge coming up on the kickoff, and he hit me, and uh, I, I flew back. I don't know, three, four, five yards. I don't know. <laughs> he landed on top of me. And uh, I, my ear, I had a cauliflower ear. He hit me so hard that they literally it swelled up. And I remember the senior was carrying me off the field, and, I mean, I, I, was, I wasn't I was there. But that's the hardest I've ever that, – that, that individual, and I tried to hit him as hard as I could – but he he unjolted my ass. I mean, <laughs> that hurt. I didn't. I got up there thinking, "Shit, how can it. we play flag?" Uh, well, God. What? What about you, Kevin? <laughs> yeah, I, I I laugh because I, I can't think of a, a in high school that, that, that of anything like that happens. But I tell the story quite often. We were playing Nebraska. I was a pulling guard for for Oklahoma State, and uh, I pulled out around the end. I was picking up this 178-pound uh, uh, cornerback. Just rolled him up about three times. And it's about the third quarter. And I don't know what uh, uh, what their coach told him, but uh, I came around the corner the fourth time, and that guy was a living missile. And he hit me so hard in the face mask, and we kind of fell off like dominoes. And I looked at him and said, "You've got to be the dumbest some bitch I've ever seen in my life." <laughs> and they <laughs> carted us both off the field, but man, I, I my head rang for weeks after that. <laughs> what about you, uh, uh, Vic? I mean, you're quarterback. You always get your ass knocked. Okay, no, let's do the opposite. No. Hey, you no? know when you when you first asked this question, I was going to say we were playing one team. And I was lead. I was blocking with my fullback and Doke on eighteen pitch. So I'm pitching to our tailback, and we're we got the three of us are lead blocks. And I run. I, I I block. You know, I'm blocking. I'm a quarterback, and I hit a guy's knee, and it it knocks me silly. So it's not. You know that was the first thing that came to my mind because I went back in the huddle, and they called the most basic play we've we had. 
And I turned to my fullback and I said, what is wing right 30 trap? He said, just, just get the ball, open up to your right and hand me the ball. I said, okay. Mm-hmm. And then I came to. So I thought that's funny. The hardest hit is me hitting somebody's knee. But I thought, secondly, we're playing this Lubbock Monterey, and they're good. Ron Reeves is good. We're going to get down on, like, the five-yard line, and we do a quarterback sweep. So I'm taking the ball, and I'm just sweeping to the left. I get smoked on the (laughs) sideline. I look up, damned if it ain't Ron Reeves playing middle (laughs) linebacker. (laughs) <laughs> on short yardage go line and i'm he's six two two ten you know i'm six foot 165 <laughs> and i think he hurt my wrist because we put our backup quarterback in there and he tim uh who was it dope tim, tim uh, hayes, tim hayes. Tim hayes. hayes. Nubbin. Yep. yeah and he he scores the only touchdown we beat him seven to three so <laughs> i i think I, i'm good friends with ron reeves now and i tell him that all the time he he was a he was a he was a really he was the best high school quarterback I had ever seen in my in, since I played. Wow, uh, Randy. So uh, I'm gonna have fun with this uh, because I think my hardest hit was one of my own teammates, Greg Lambert, that probably laid me out in practice. But we won't go into that. But in a game, and I'm gonna leverage off Doke's Terry Orr story. Um, we're, we're, you know, t- it looks like Terry's going to make it through the hole. We're filling. I'm coming in and from the cornerback position. I know it's going to be bad. And, um, and, and then, and then I'll say, like, and, and then it's like, oh, you know, there's a collision. And then the kind of the bodies all kind of fall over to the side. And I'm thinking, shit. That wasn't so bad. That was Terry Orr, and what? Wow, what a big deal! And then I look down, and the linebacker who filled right in front of me, David Lawrence, is screaming in pain. He he took the hit from Terry Orr. He never played another <laughs> down of football. Oh wow! <laughs> so I was I, I, he was the shock absorber. <laughs> <laughs> Jay, I mean, I know you've met, you've ever told your story, but tell these guys. Um, we were playing Hartford, and um, Irvin Davis ran the out, and uh, I ran the deep out, and uh, they threw the ball to Irvin, and I turned around and headed back towards Irvin, and uh, one of their top defensive backs was chasing him, and uh, I hit him right in the chest with my face mask. And uh, all I can say is when I woke up, I was holding my helmet by my face mask and it was swinging, you know, on two two bolts. Um, I, flattened, I, flattened the three, I, flattened, I flattened the three bar face mask and broke the bolts on each side. And um, the... Uh, it was pretty bad, but I broke his I broke his sternum. But uh, you know, I went back to the sidelines, and you know, they, which they sidelines? Didn't, didn't take my helmet away. So, do you remember that, Don? No, I said, which sideline did you go to? <laughs> our, I was, they brought y'all brought me back you to our sideline. <laughs> um, Coach, oh, Buck Buchanan, yeah. Coach Buck Buchanan played for Chicago. He's a huge man. You know, four hundred pounds. I said, they, I said, y'all fix my helmet. And they said, no, we can't. You can't go back in the game. And I went to Buck and I said, fix my helmet. So he, he uh, grabbed my face mask. It was a three bar cage and bent it back to where they could, they could uh, attach it back to my helmet. So they put it back together. And uh, I went back in the game and <laughs> played it two plays. And then, you know, Coach Sherwood came out there and grabbed me by the back of my head and or back of my, my my jersey and drug me off the field and said, what are you doing out here? And I said, I want to play. But it was funny because the, the managers on the field were like, we can't fix your helmet. And I said, no, well, who are you going to fight me or, or, or Coach Sherwood? And they said, you, we don't want to fight you. So they fixed my helmet and I went on the on, back on the field. Mm. Mm. Crazy stuff. What about you, Martin? Well, I have a kind of a two part story here. Uh, uh, hey, uh, Vic, who was the running back for Odessa High? Scott Kaywood. 
K Wood. K Wood. Yeah. Okay. So, and what was our score? We beat them 17 14? 14 to 6. 14 7. 14 yeah. 7. Okay. So he was a, uh, he was a tailback for Odessa High. And so Randy and I were on the same sideline. I was, I was lying. You can stop. <laughs> no, no. Randy, Randy and I were on the strong side, so I was strong side linebacker, and he was always with me wherever I went. He went, and so, so, uh, I mean, Kaywood is just beating me up. They're running the sweep, and the the his knees are just. I'm, I'm, I mean, I'm dizzy. He he just running, 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 and so we were in the huddle. And, you know, Randy's a good friend of mine. I go, Pete, man, you got to step up here. I mean, I need a little help. I need a little, I need a little help here. You got to quit shuffling because they're not throwing the ball. They're running, they are running over us. I go, quit shuffling, Pete. Quit shuffling. So, anyhow, I love you. I love and you, I said, hey, listen, if he comes around the corner again, I'm I'm letting him go to paint. He's scoring because I cannot tackle this guy. I mean, so anyhow, we shut him down, but Scott K would just wow. He beat me up for four quarters. <laughs> four quarters. Don, what about you, Don? Um, no, the one I came to my mind where we're talking about this was uh this was in in practice and uh but for whatever reason we lined up the way we were, but I, I wound up in this position because Royce, he was running and you know, he, you didn't have to worry about Royce juking anybody. He never juked anybody. <laughs> and I remember trying to take him on straight. And uh, I, in my mind, we fell sideways, but I'm sure it was not quite like that at all. You know, it was, it was, it was the other way, but uh, that's when I remember. Hey, uh, so Lisa, ask the boy, the Mojo Boys, about the movie and the and the uh, TV well, shows. I, yeah. So, I mean, really, what I want to know is, how, do you feel like that show accurately portrayed um, the culture of Permian football, or or the movie? Yeah, yeah, the movie or the or the show. Vic. <laughs> well. I mean, everything's going to be exaggerated. It's Hollywood, so they've got to yeah, well, it and you know make it bigger. Hey, but- I, I used to watch the the series all every Friday night. Uh, I love the characters, but but for purposes of this question, that had that was totally non Permian. That was a whole different deal. But I do have a, a story because Bus Bissinger's the New York Times bestseller who wrote the book and. Uh, Oh, and by the way, he's a cross dresser. I thought I'd throw that in there. <laughs> <laughs> he <laughs> uh, this his, is being his, recorded. <laughs> so he he's related to Peter Berg. So I'm in Odessa and one 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 weekend. And I go to the Pep Rally and it's it's circa nineteen seventy eight. The the band, the, the Pepads, the players with their jersey and they're playing the, the fight song. And I walk out there and I'm thinking, man, this is 30 years later and nothing's changed. Nothing. So I go up and I see this guy and he's got his hat kind of, you know, kind of like Mr. You know, kind of cool. And I walk up to him and I said, you're not from Odessa. He said, no. I said, you're Peter Berg, the director of this Friday Night Lights, aren't you? And he said, yes, sir, I am. Who are you? I said, I'm Vic Vines. I played out here, blah, blah, blah. And he said, what are you doing tonight? I said, well, the the head coach of the team is one of my college teammates, Scott Smith, which is true. And he said, I said, so I'm I'm on the sidelines. He said, you care to hang out with me and tell me a little bit about Permian football? I said, sure, I I can do that. I was jacked up because all of my life I've wanted to be an actor. I thought I could be an actor, and I thought this is my chance. I'm going to be with the director, Peter Berg. And this, I don't, I don't drink anymore, but I was drinking back then. And I was so excited. I think I had about 10 vodkas. So I'm on the sideline. We're playing Midland Lee. And it is, it is, it is fast paced. 
people are hitting. You got helicopters flying over the getting game film footage. And I'm sitting there with Peter Berg in the middle of, you know, out in the middle of nowhere. You got 20,000 people at this game. And he's out there and he's, he's hyper and he's looking at the game and we go in at halftime and uh, Permian is up by, I think, 10 points. Doak, what are you doing there, bro? Do you want to turn on a light? I'm moving around. I got up. <laughs> Looks like he's going to take, take a, a piss. Break. Please turn the light off. No, <laughs> no I'm, be careful. Get be up careful. I'm old. I yeah, can't, Doak, I old hey, hey, quit interrupting my story. Sorry. <laughs> Speaking of knuckleheads, so we go in the, at halftime, and me and Peter are in the back of the the locker room, and and my friend Scott Smith has given this halftime speech to his team, and his son his son is the starting quarterback, and you're either twenty or twenty five at Permian. I think he was twenty, and I was twenty, so I'm just getting into all that's going on, and I look at Peter, and I'm like, Peter, Peter. I mean, look at look at that. Look at that. Do you think you think that guy wants to win? And his son's just sitting there in awe, just mouth drop, listening to his dad. You could hear a pin drop. And he looks over at me and he says, Vic, I'm a hockey player from Wisconsin. I don't know much about football. I started <laughs> laughing. <laughs> he said, but I moved out to LA. Vic, I've had a lot of girls. I've done a lot of drugs, but this, this is better than all of that. And I looked right at him, right in the eyes, and I said, then you're catching the spirit of what Mojo football is all about. It's the best. You understand, Peter? It's the best. <laughs> and I'll, I'll never remember. Now, I followed that up with a couple of calls down into his Austin studio. I was trying to get in the movie, but that never worked out so well. But I'm telling you, I have traveled as Martin and Randy and Doak. We've all traveled around. And sometimes I'll wear my Permian P hat. And I, inevitably, anywhere I go, they're going to say, is that a – happened two days ago. They said, is that an Odessa hat? And I said, yep, yep. They recognize it. They know us. It put us on the map. Can I say it put you – it put Well, you it on did, but uh, I was – at Nimitz, I was a coordinator at Nimitz, and I was the head scout when uh, I was up and around that area, and I got to meet Bissinger. And I think uh, the racist part of it, guys, uh, to get back to your question, yeah, that culture did exist. But I was up there, and some of these uh, players, they wouldn't show up to practice, and we knew where they were. And, and one of my jobs was to go find them, and that I had to go to a different part of town. But that was, uh, yeah, but he blew it out. I mean, I think the racism deal was everywhere. I mean, it was just, I mean, you're with your buddies and you call each other gringo, you know, you're laughing like Mark and Rikus and I did. And he, he made it seem, but there was, I mean, yeah, the Booby Miles incident, uh, you know, not all that. But, yeah, there was some, you know, out here in West Texas, you're going to get that. But he blew it up a little bit to the point where – uh he was not welcome back in Odessa because he got into some people's personal lives. So, but basically, yeah, to answer your question, I, th I thought it was, I was up there a lot and uh, I was, uh, you know, poor privy to what was going on, but to me, it didn't mean anything. I mean, I'm used to that, you know, kind of stuff. The other kids were, you know, bantering back and forth, but uh, he wrote a book and uh, he portrayed coach Gaines as coach Gaines, is a very Christian man. And he's, uh, but he portrayed Gary at points as not being the type of guy that Coach Gaines is, and that made Coach Gaines mad. And rest in peace, Coach. But uh, I do remember there was some big problems about that with Coach Gaines. Yeah. Well, yeah. they got Billy Bob Thornton to play him. Yes, but uh, <laughs> there were, you know, there, uh, Coach Gaines. Uh, I mean, he didn't portray him bad, but there were some things brought up that you know, that offended Coach Gaines because Coach Gaines invited the man over to his house and that they had sit-downs and he was in the locker room a lot. And But uh, there were well, some no, sour did. notes on that. There were some sour notes on that. He shouldn't have portrayed yeah. and did some things Coach Gaines. Uh, well, correct me if I'm wrong, Doug, but did, did Bissinger present this book as, hey, I'm going to write a, a feel-good story about this, you know, this historic high school football program in Texas – 
And then he got, you know, Coach Gaines gave him full access. I mean, I saw a picture the other day when Bissinger was right next to Gary Gaines, six yards on the field. Yes. He, he listening to him call the play with Mike Winchell, the quarterback. So then he writes this book that's a very controversial, some of it true, some of it exaggerated. And and then Coach Gaines like, man, you you didn't you sold me down the river. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. kind of so, yeah. Uh Hey, but guys. you know he did what, he did his job and you know sour grapes and all that but uh, you know it's it's going to happen and it did it put Premier on the map but for the I think for the wrong reasons uh, yeah hey guys I let really me ask you a question I didn't I don't I I just don't agree with that I mean yeah you can go play but that's not to me I I don't know uh, it just brought a bad taste because of the way Gaines was treated because that man. He got a lot of his kids. He was like y'all's coach Sherwood. Uh, I mean, seriously, he, when y'all talked about your coach, I, I immediately thought of Coach Gaines and how he went about treating his players. Uh, but, you know, hell, out here in West Texas, uh, you can say something nowadays and get in a lot of trouble, what we used to just say every day. Yep. Yeah. You know, you know, we're all from West Texas, and um, I wonder – what this 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 discussion we've had today and how it would play as maybe a way to to uh cure all the ills of anything that was said in, in in any of the Friday Night Lights stuff and you know give all of us an opportunity to try and make this a really good uh um story that you know in the end of the story that's, that's something that we we all want it to be this way. Well, I will say this about our experience, and 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 I know my boys on this call will will agree. Jay, if, if I were to run across you anywhere, just happenstance, hey, I'm Jay Miller. I played at Plainview. You know, we're instantly going to be bonded because I went through the same thing you went through, and and there's respect for you because you played at that program. And, you know, it, I mean, I run across people all the time. And if there's football is, is a common denominator, that you just got a bond. And you talk a different language. You can relate in a different way. And it's – I'll say this, and, and I don't want to get too personal, but, uh, you know, and, and my my friends on this this uh, call know my, my background and my uh, – my life as an adult, which has up until recently has been very tough because of alcoholism. And I look back and I think about what Permian built into me, the, the never give up the perseverance, the dedication. I don't think that I could have been where I am today unless I lived and breathed that with these guys all the way through our program. It taught me that. And some people go, Oh, you put too much credence in your high school bullshit. You know, this, this made me who I am. It's not my complete identity right now, but that toughness and that never always had that ability to look in the mirror and go, you know what? You don't give up. And, and, you know, dopes, we've all, every one of us have had our trials and tribulations, maybe me more than others. Cause I kept, you know, shoot myself in the foot, but there's no way I'm sitting here if I don't go through that program. Vic, I'm going to say, I'm going to bounce off of what you just said. You know, we had a, uh, as has mentioned earlier, we were, our 10, 78 team was inducted into the, the walk of fame at, at that Plainview. And when we got back together eight weeks ago, is that about right, Jay? Eight, yeah. 10 weeks ago, something like the 13th that. 13th of September. It was, I, I'm telling you, we, it was like instant, um, like we were back playing in 1978. Uh, we laughed about the same things. We, uh, we went through the same trials and tribulations that you're talking about. We all threw up, you know, we all did those things and, and, and you started a sentence and your guard or Don Palmer or somebody would, would pile right in on top of it and finish your story for you. And, and, and you wouldn't argue with them because 
they lived the same thing you did. So I, yep. I agree with you, Vic. There's a there's a camaraderie that 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 uh, uh, that that football player, whether it's because we took a lot of showers together, oh, or we threw up a lot together. I'm not for sure why, but, but we, we, we had a lot. We of have a, we've got a lady in here. <laughs> 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 oh, that's oh. Well, I guarantee this is this has been good. I uh we we had a lot of respect for y'all going up there. I do know that. We had a lot of respect for y'all for what you could do. And uh we had to make up our minds and to hit, sit here and talk to my old buddies and my new buddies who can talk football. It's been it's been very therapeutical cuz uh I hadn't thought about that in a while. I'm still in the coaching business, but I don't think about 1978. But when it was brought up, a lot of memories came to my mind, and they're all fond. Mm -hmm. uh, the atmosphere, the Jones Stadium, just being together out there with two good teams, it's good on good. And uh, that's competition. It's good on good. Uh, I, believe, it, well, hey, I believe well, – One more thing, Michael. I believe that, that we were the most talented – uh, teams that played in the playoffs for many years in, in the Panhandle of Texas. And I think that's something that, that needs to be stated here because we were um, unbelievable teams. And uh, we were, we were, we were the clash of a, of a, of a powerhouse that was ready to go and a growing powerhouse that was in, in the infancy and it is so much fun to talk to you guys. I mean, I've been, I've been my, because you realize we lost that game. We were, we were done with our, 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 our careers. And that's the hardest. You can't imagine the tears that were in our locker room that night. Oh yeah. That afternoon. I mean, we were crying. We were ordering liquor. We were doing everything we needed to do. But, you know. <laughs> I love that. I love yeah. it. Amen on that. Well, I hear you on that. That, so, that is sad. You so guys, gentlemen. some of you guys got to play. I had to go home, and uh, I knew my career was over. I'm like you, man. That was sad when we got beat. Yeah. I thought, well, this is it, man. That's it. It's it. Oh. And, you know, I, I was one of the lucky ones. I got to go further. Kevin got to go further. Don got to go further. All three of us got college scholarships. And, uh, that's that's one of the things I, I cherish my whole life. I mean, my knees now are uh, they're going to have to replace both of them. My shoulders are yeah. not replaced. Um, it's not fun, but uh, this has been incredible. Don, I mean, I tell you what, Vic, I, I appreciate you uh, answering me when I asked you about this. I thought we would have a good time, and uh, thank you guys. I mean, this is incredible. Thank well, you. I, we're, 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 I enjoyed it. This is. We've had two hours, but I want to ask two more questions. And let's talk about high school. Uh, Lisa, why don't, you, uh, why don't you ask them about teachers? Because they, 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 it's influence, it's, you know, to some of these guys. And, of course, we don't know the Mojo teachers, but uh, Odessa, your friends are going to watch this video. So go ahead, Lisa. I, I'm going to start with the Mojo guys first. So my, the question I want to ask is, is there a teacher in high school, it doesn't matter what year of high school, that really – stands out for you that left an indelible impression that really helped you that mentored you that you just really remember that teacher I, doke i'm going to start with you well i had uh colonel foster there was a mr foster there he helped me a lot but to be honest with you it was one of my uh my coaches uh gene Mc mccandless uh he i didn't have him in the classroom but i had him and I knew I was a bat boy for Permian Baseball when I was at uh, at Burnett because it was right around the corner. So Gary Smith and I, we'd get on our bikes, and we knew Permian was per – but since we were bat boys, so I'd known him all those years. And then he was the one that kept talking to me about, you know, not giving up. There's life after football. You know, make sure you get education, you know, and hang in there. Because at my size, he was really the only guy – uh, one of the coaches that was really 100% behind me and he never told me I couldn't do it, but he, he took me aside a couple of times and Miss Pilfer was an English teacher who, uh, those two right there had an impact on me because Miss Pilfer taught me that, uh, you know, no matter how I struggle in sports or in the classroom, I have to, you know, I have to keep the faith, be relentless about it, just keep working. And so those two right there, and I do appreciate both of them because 
they helped me a lot in the turmoil years of uh, in high school. Wonderful. Randy, what about you? You know, I, I think we had a lot of uh, very positive teachers uh, in an environment that was, you know, I, I think everybody was doing the best they could. I think um, um, we had, yeah, I wouldn't, there maybe an Alice Jeffers stood out because we knew her, we knew her kids and she was a, a positive force uh, within, within our high school community. Uh, I didn't have her for a class, but she was always high energy, but we had, we were, we had some really good teachers. Um, and I think we were blessed. We, we grew up in a very, um, simple environment and, um, and, and, you know, I, I, we had it better than a lot of people, I think. Right. Martin? Well, <laughs> so uh, so my junior year in the spring ball, uh, I had a, well, we, we all, well, we had a really, a really good English teacher, and she was also just smoking hot. Uh, <laughs> uh, smoking hot. Miss Where Kermit, are we going with this? Oh, 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 oh. Everybody's saying she's smoking hot. Who's so this? Miss who? I'm sorry. Miss Clements. Okay. I mean, she was. So anyhow, but she was a good teacher. So it wasn't any of that hanky panky stuff. Everything was good, but I broke. I broke my right wrist my junior year during spring ball, and uh, we were, you know, going to have to put on a play, and we were doing something, and you know, nobody wanted to do it, but by God, it was her class. And so, uh, you know, I, I showed up, I showed up with a cast on my arm and she goes, well, what happened? And I go, well, I, I, you know, yesterday I broke my arm, my, my wrist. And she goes, well, okay, well, we've got our, we got our work on our, you know, our play and we got to do all this. I go, no, nah, I think I'm out. She goes, ah, you're not out at all. I mean, she was tougher than Wilkins. She goes, you are not out, and you're in the deal. I was like, holy cow! I mean, this. So anyhow, she was she was a great teacher. We had, uh, I don't know. She was just she was all about us, you know. And mm -hmm. So she was she was a great teacher, great teacher. Man, smoking hot. <laughs> yes, it was smoking what about hot. <laughs> Vic, yeah. uh, well, I I can't answer this question without saying my mother who was a 40 year second grade teacher uh Chesilu, virginia northington how about that name Woo! grew up on a farm in altus oklahoma uh but anyway i have to give my mom kudos there there was an eighth grade english teacher named miss pickett <laughs> and elaine. Was elaine, elaine pickett exactly elaine pickett and she was beloved by every student. And Martin and Randy and I had the chance to go take a trip to Europe and Greece and lots of places. Uh, we, we studied history in Rome. And I think we went over there for maybe three weeks or something. But she was our teacher that was a chaperone. And we went over there. There was a group of probably, I don't know, 15 Odessa people and then some other people we met over there. But she was just, she made class fun. Uh, she made learning fun. And, and teachers, good teachers make it fun. And, and I remember all our teachers, like Randy said, we had good teachers. I remember math. When I went to Baylor and I took math, it was like, what the heck? This is like elementary math. Cause I was, we were, I was so ski. I was so taught math at Permian. I don't know if you other guys, you know, realize that, but I did because I went through college math. I'm like, man, this is, this is nothing. So Elaine Pickett gets my vote. There you go. There you go. I like Miss Pickett. Pickett. The only, I love it. The only book I ever read made me cry was algebra one. 
<laughs> what about you, Kevin? What about uh... Uh, you know? Uh, and and funny you guys are talking about that, but you know, Plainview had. I was just getting into high school, and and Coach Sherwood had bred a uh, uh, an environment which all the teachers were buying into and encouraging us to be successful because we hadn't been successful before. So they were seeing some really cool things happening under Coach Sherwood. But I'm going to go back to my third and my fifth grade teacher, Maddie Lou Ellis and Dorothy Willingham, uh, two of the toughest teachers I believe I've ever had. But yet it was tough love. And they encouraged me to excel beyond what I thought I could do. I was always just enough to get get by. And they they encouraged me to step it up a, a notch. What uh, Don? What did you guys do? Oh yeah. Uh, for me it's um Mr. Barry and Mrs. Barry. He taught physics and she taught uh, geometry and algebra too. Mm -hmm. And they just like Kevin's talking about, they got you got you got you going where you really believed you could do it at the next layer and later on and it really got me believing because i was a farm kid and so i had practical knowledge of physics but not <laughs> <laughs> how it all worked you know and so learn about all that kind of stuff i remember their and they, just their genuine connection with us i just remember a real connection with those two cool uh, mr miller yeah um i hope you say your mom yeah, uh, my mom was an English teacher, and everybody loved her. She's still alive, and I love her to death. But uh, I think my favorite teacher that I ever had was Coach Sherwood. I mean, like I say, we had been through Kevin, and we'll, we'll say this too: we had been through so many things with Coach Kirk. I mean, like I say, the guy grabbed my face mask and spit in my face when I asked him a question. And I mean, I I, I just don't ap appreciate that kind. of treatment and and um i almost quit football because of that but um coach sherwood came in and he he showed me how a uh, champion should should operate he was something that i've never been i've never been around anybody like that and uh i'm happy that i got to spend time with that man and uh his his son Scott Sherwood. I've I've thanked him a many many times for sharing his dad with us. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, Amen. I uh, I know that uh, he was so mad at us because Kelly's not here tonight. Kelly Raper and I and and Grant Taylor, which was 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 they were the right and left tackles. Uh, we used to he used to put us in a separate room from everybody else before a game. Because we were not the guys that would sit there and do this mind mill or sitting there not talking and, 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 and thinking about the game. We were cutting jokes and having fun and doing all that stuff. And uh, Scott, his son, um, went and told his dad that uh, we were doing that. And he said, these guys kick ass when they're on the field. Don't even worry about what they're doing because whatever they're doing is right. <laughs> you know, it's just – he was he was such an influence on me. Like I say, the, the time that for him to call me and Kelly and say, "Would you come spend some time with me at, at, at MD Anderson before I die?" and uh, everything meant a lot to me, and I'll never forget that. Good memory, wow. Coach. Go That's a good, good memory. Go ahead. Go ahead. Good memory. Well. Rather than going to another question, because like I said we're now over to about two hours and fifteen minutes, uh, let's go with some parting words, and uh, and I'm going to start with Vic since he's the quarterback of the Mojo. Yes, we. Uh, oh gosh, you know I I do a lot of work out in Odessa, so I'm out there and uh, in. in frequently and I've every time I'm out there I'll call coach Wilkins and you know he's 82 years old now and his body's breaking down on him but we'll go have lunch and and that man and I always got along with coach Wilkins a lot of people didn't like him uh but I've spent some time with him 
and he got inducted to the Texas Sports Hall of Fame this last spring. And there were 30 players and coaches that went to Waco and saw him inducted. But his mind, he, he can think back in 1971, 72. I mean, like vivid, vivid memory. And I've got – I stay in touch with the coaches. I I have given pregame speeches this year. I gave one to Plano. We were 0-4 against Plano. And our first game this year was Plano. And I was out there and I said, Coach, you know I lost two games. We lost two games in high school to Plano – uh, I think you might want to consider asking me to give the speech. He said, <laughs> hey, all right, so you're on. And uh, so I was able, and I get a little jacked up. I mean, I'm telling you, I mean, to this day, that sport, and I, and I bought in as an eight-year-old, Michael. I had a book, The History of the National Football League. I knew the players, the coaches, the owners, the stadiums, I was like, I don't know if I came out of the wound that like, you're going to love this sport. You're going to love to play this sport, but that's the way I feel. And there's so many lessons that I've learned from sports and I've touched on some, uh, but I, I go back and I, I know some of the high school players that play for Permian. Uh, they beat Plano and it was I was so excited. I was waiting for the team and I was seeing these kids, these 17, 18 year old kids walk into the locker room, just the joy on their face because of this victory. And I go in there and I, you know, he's putting the coach is saying, Hey, come on in, come on in. And they're, they're playing rap music, which we weren't doing that back in 78, but they're all dancing and, and they got black on their eyes like that. And I'm, I'm over there talking to one of the coaches and all of a sudden coach Ellison, the head coach at Permian says, Vic, Vic, where, where's Vic? And I'm like, what, what's he, what's he want me for? And he's like, you got anything to say to the team? And I'm like, Whoa, wait a minute. I've given pregame speeches. I've never ever given a talk after the game. And I walk up and I put my hand up and, and I'm looking at all these kids and I'm speechless. I, I don't know what to say. And I just said, damn proud of you. That's all I had. And they just went berserk. So <laughs> I, I, just, I can, I have tried my whole life to, to, to get in the business world, what I got in the athletic world. And I've never, I've never been able to do that. I've tried to do that. Um, uh, so there's, you know, I can still remember walking off the field when we got beat by Plano at Texas stadium. I'm on the 50 yard line. It's the front page of the Dallas morning news. My head is bowed down and a coach has to literally walk me to the locker room. I don't raise my head. I do not raise my head. So I make it a point, you know, why do I keep up with all this? Cause it's important to me. Why do I, when I go out to Odessa, I, I say dope, you know, Martin, let's, let's, you know, let's get together because it's important to me. It, it, it's meaningful to me. Those were how many people have a thread of 18 high school classmates and teammates. I tell people that you're going you high school. I'm like, yeah, high school. So it was special growing up. Odessa was special. It still is. It's changed, but there is something that's built into everybody that grew up that came out of Odessa because every one of those guys is a success. They've all become successful fathers, dads, businessmen, coaches, teachers. You know how many people Doak Huddleston has affected in his life? Thousands of girls and men, young men. I was out there one time. He had the, 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 the kids that were troubled kids. And I'm there just to see Doak. And Doak says, hey, man, hey. Hey, this is Vic. He's one of my teammates. Hey, Vic, you got something to say? I mean, I was like, this place is still special, and I'll never forget that. Good. Oh, uh, Don, what about you? Parting words? Oh, I, I, first of all, I want to thank you guys for agreeing to do it. I'm glad that Jay got a hold of me because I loved hearing the night's stories just listening. been fantastic. <laughs> and uh, uh, But I – 
I agree with Vic that it kind of happened upon us, right? We just happened to be born at the time in Plainview that there was another pile of kids that showed up at that same age and <laughs> Coach Sherwood shows up, you know. I think he tried to get it. He had interviewed a few years before and did not get the job. I think somebody else got it and he came back. And so, and I think Coach Sherwood was one of those guys, though, the coaches that kind of looked at what the landscape was like and that he knew something about the – the way the teams had done it as younger kids and stuff and was interested in, in being there, but gosh, we had no idea what kind of blessing we were going to have by being instructed by him and grown by him and shaped by him. And, uh, I, that's something I, like you said, it just keeps going through your life. That idea of just the way you treat people that work for you, the way you treat others around you he affected that uh, you know you just you thought about those categories in a different way because of the way he laid out this a year we were just around him a year you know it was just this short amount of time but uh it was a big change for us so okay. good memories Super. Doke? well i've enjoyed listening to uh, you're right. Uh, the same. There's a group of kids in Plainview and a group of kids in Odessa doing the same thing, growing up, working, and here we are tonight. For, was it 46 years? Yeah, 46. 46 yes. 46 years later, and we have vivid memories. We seem to be all be doing well, and that I'm grateful. I'm so also grateful to be included in this because it's been fun, and we have a lot in common, guys. We've all chewed some of the same dirt, and. Uh, Blessings to y'all, and uh, I just enjoyed it. I've been blessed to continue with kids and coaching and try to make an, to, to make an effort to change somebody's life. Uh, kids have changed uh, attitude, and, you know, we got some athletes, but it's good to see kids smile. And I appreciate being part of this and bless each one of you. We made it. Uh, I, I, don't, I just turned 64. I got a knee appointment tomorrow, and uh, – no one said it was going to be easy getting old. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Kevin. Uh, I'm not going to. I'm not going to repeat what Don said, but I agree with him 100. percent Jay and 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 Don and I all grew up farm kids. Um, uh, Don and I grew up really close to each other. Uh, you know the the funny thing about Plainview, and, and I've already shared this, is we didn't have that winning tradition, so. Me personally, I never thought much. I mean, we all played baseball, basketball, football. And when you left high school, that was it. So, you know, playing further down the road was never in my conceptual idea. And, and so, uh, so I was blessed. But I, I, I am blessed because I got to come back to do what I always wanted to do. I told my dad when I was five, I wanted to farm. That's all I wanted to do. And so I've been blessed that I got to do that. Uh, now I get to share those blessings with my grandchildren. And I tell my grandchildren, I said, you don't have to be great. You just have to be good to one another. <laughs> and so that's that's what I'm going to leave with, uh, leaving an impression on my grandchildren that uh, you don't have to be good. You just have to be good to other people. So, Well said. Well Amen. said. Well said. Ma Martin? Well, you know, uh, you know, I just start thinking about all the friends and the time we spent together. I mean, there was a lot of uh, blood, sweat, and tears. But you know, it was it was painful. A couple of things. It was very painful when we lost, and it was over. And then through the years, you know, we would come back to school, watch games, and all that. But after after I matured a little bit, you know, it's kind of like, okay. And I, I, we all see coach Wilkins a bunch and, you know, we just, you know, I said, Hey coach, you know, you want to know what, uh, you know, Mojo football taught me. And he goes, now nah, tell me what, you know, I mean, I don't, I don't even know if he was interested. He was interested, but he was just wanted to hear what I said. I said, you know, hard work. I mean, hard work and determination 
and putting the time in usually gets you or it does get you good results. So you can say sports, college, you can say your life, your marriage, whatever. So, But if you'll put in the time, if you'll put in the time, then you usually just get super good results, super good results. And I will say this, and I said it at the beginning, and I, I mean, I feel this from what I've heard the Plainview players say and everything, I mean, you know, one more last game, you'd repeat ours, and one more last game, we we'd repeat Plano's. So uh, it's a it's a it's a common thread that we share when you know it's it's the same kind of pain. But uh, you guys were a great a great team, and uh, you know we came out on the other side. But you you guys were a good team, good squad. Cool, Jay. Well, I want to thank everybody for doing this. I mean, you know, I just was sitting there one night on Facebook and and uh, saw Vic in the West Texas uh, um, group. And, uh, you know, I said, Vic, do you want to talk to me about the game we played? And uh, he was like, yeah. And uh, I think this has been very, <laughs> very, 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 very uh good for us and good for y'all because um it just talks about west texas values it talks about the things that we did the things we grew up with i mean i have this 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 game has been you know and you see it on the movies i mean it's been something that's been in the craw in my life my whole life because i couldn't understand how we lost because we were so good but y'all were better Y'all were uh, uh, brought up a different way, and and uh, y'all knew what to do when you faced the the things that we were throwing at you, and you know that was tough. I was fortunate enough to get to go to the next level along with some, a lot of guys on my team. Again, twelve of us got scholarships. I mean, that's that was a very big deal. That's impressive. But the thing is that I see is that, um. We all grew so much. I mean, we were we were not a uh, group that was together. Um, I mean, like you know, when we're, I was giving Don a hard time uh, or a hard time today um, because he was giving me a hard time about talking too much today on the text. <laughs> but uh, you know, <laughs> I talk a lot. <laughs> and, 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 and by the way, and by the way. <laughs> Uh, create another group text without Lisa and I. <laughs> no, that's funny. That's funny. Hey, I'm sorry. You know, I'm no, going to tell It's okay, you man. Things. It's okay. I mean, it's like me talking baseball because guys, I, you know, I quit my, uh, my senior year because I played baseball and, and I get it when I talk to my baseball friends, it's just, it's, 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 it's a camaraderie that no one understands unless you play team together since you were kids. So I understand that. But, uh, but the thing well, that I see here now is that, you know, Don Palmer and I have not talked in probably 40 years. Wow. <laughs> and it's so exciting for me to talk to that man. Yeah. We were, we were a team. He's been a good friend of mine. He was a good friend of mine back there. We didn't talk much, but we're friends. And it's nice to hear what he thinks and how he's doing. I'm very proud of what I see him. You know, he's been an engineer at Raytheon, and and that's wonderful. Um, but I mean, this is this is just this is this is like uh, something that, that I think that we've all needed. We've all needed to have this kind of conversation where we all get to we all get to feel better. Mm -hmm. And uh, you know, we we you don't guys you don't realize what it was like that day when we lost that game. We walked in the locker room there at Tech, and we were all crying in the locker room. And I mean, I mean, just bawling. I mean, it was just we could not believe y'all did that to us. And um, I can say that if we did it again, I think we'd win. But you know, we just there were too many things we didn't know. Yeah. Okay. But uh, I want to say thank you to you guys for putting up with us. I mean, we 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 you didn't have to do this. You sure didn't have to do this, but you know, I think it was good for y'all too. Oh, uh, definitely. Definitely good. I will say this. I've saved all your phone numbers. I want to continue to stay in touch. 
And if there's anything I can do to help you guys or likewise, I, I, I welcome that. So Vic, thank you for, for working with me and, and putting this together. And uh, I don't think there's any reason not to do it again sometime. That'd be fun. Uh, Randy, what about you, man? Last one. Yeah, so I'll keep mine brief. I think, first of all, Lisa and Michael, thank you for hosting this. Yep. This has been a, a, a wonderful evening uh, to let us go on about all kinds of stuff and, and kind of relive some memories here. And hats off to, to our Plainview friends here. Uh, we, we all have had that uh, ending moment, Jay. We, we got ours the next week later uh, after five turnovers and uh, an empty feeling of uh of emptiness of unaccomplishment of something missing so uh yeah i've carried that for a long time uh it, it's great uh that we get to reminisce um we're blessed that we've had uh a number of years now I'm, i forget the count we're 17 of us on a text stream and it's daily it's a constant chatter and that's healthy that's good i encourage you guys to do that if you don't um I think that um, if I uh, go back in time, what was therapeutic for me was getting that film, looking at it. And I have been, I love football. I, I wasn't in a situation where I got to keep playing, but I love the sport. Uh, I love everything about it. I continue to follow it. I've watched my kids play it. And so for me to watch the Plainview Permian game, um, I, it, it brought joy to my heart. No, no disrespect to you guys, but from a different reason, I got to see my friends on the field play at what I considered an unbelievably high level of football. And I've been detached from that for 46 years. I hadn't watched, hadn't seen that film ever. Right. We didn't watch that film after we won. We, we just moved on. So I've never seen that film. So it was, it was awesome to see, and I complimented Vic on his performance. I would do the same to all my friends on the line. I'm just, it was awesome to see their relentlessness, their execution, the, the way they played the game was just an affirmation to me that our bond, what we did, what we went through, what makes us who we are today is uh, special. So thank you for hosting this again. Oh, yeah. Well, thank you. Well, thank thank you, you guys. Much. Thank you for leaving uh, your imprint of your stories uh, on our show. And uh, I'm, we're, 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 Lisa and I are grateful. So, but I'm going to turn it over to Lisa because she uses great, you know, nice educated words. <laughs> and I can So Lisa, parting words for our gentlemen, our show. You know, I, I grew I was born and raised in Plainview. I'm a farm girl, you know, grew up in Edmondson and, um, you know, I think there's a uniqueness to the culture of West Texas, whether you're in the Panhandle or even further west in Midland, Odessa area. And I, I will tell you, okay, I've lived in nine states. The uniqueness about West Texas is something that's very, very special. I've worked with young people all over the country. And growing up in that culture and that level of camaraderie is something that you know, you're going to take to your grave. We're all going to take to our grave because I grew up in that environment as well. And I played sports and I, I, I hope that you leave this show tonight with these memories, but really focusing on the gift that you were given, the gift of friendship, the, the gift of being guided um, that propelled your life in the way that it did. It's more than just football. It's more than just a game. You were given something really, really special, both teams where where you grew up and where you came from and there are not a lot of people that can say that and it's just been re a real honor and a treat to listen to your stories to observe um, the connection that you have with each other and the level of respect that showed up today for each other you know opposing teams and it, it was just really delightful you know like Michael said we were at that game I, I just remember thinking it was horribly cold and I wanted to go to the car mm -hmm. And uh, on a side note, Vic, my younger sister is the Plano superintendent. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So every time you mention that, you know, I'm thinking about my sister and all the games yeah. that she's on. Yeah. But 
we're just so honored. And, you know, Jay, thanks for, you know, helping put this together. Um, we've had a lot of fun doing these and it's uh, so heartwarming. Uh, I mean, really to the depth of my core to hear these stories and the bonds that y'all have with each other. I mean, it's just something really, really special. Um, don't take it for granted. Life is so short. You both, both teams, you've lost a lot of teammates, a lot of friends, and um, life is precious. Life yep. is precious. This is a different, you're at a different stage now. And then I'll just close it with this. Growing old ain't for sissies. <laughs> Amen, sister. Amen. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I have two artificial hips, two uh, knee reconstructions. I've had 14 surgeries. It is. Oh, not my gosh. Oh, wow. <laughs> uh, so, guys, thank you again for for coming on the show. Thank you, Jay and Vic, to uh, putting this together. And, you know, I, as I mentioned, I will publish this to us on tomorrow, on tomorrow on my YouTube channel and our Plainview Goat Knuckle uh, Facebook page. Uh, but please uh, remind everyone to hit the subscribe button, like go. it, and leave a comment, please. Awesome. So, thank you, Michael. Thank, thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Then, thank you guys. We'll, we'll thank love to have you guys on thank again. You. Good thank night. you, guys. Thank I'll you see you in your heads later. All right. Not bad. Hook them on. No, <laughs> hook no hook them horns. <laughs> if you couldn't get into UT, you couldn't get into UT. <laughs> Hell, I went by it uh, <laughs> several times. Hell. <laughs> See you guys. See you guys. Good night, Good night guys. Good night. Good night. Nice meeting y'all. Nice to meet you, Lisa. Have a good one. How do you shut this thing off? Well, I'll I'll kick you out. Okay, and, thank you, Lisa. And, and Doke as well. You gonna kick Doke out? Um, there we go. Damn, that went very well. You oh, know, no. I, I there was a lot of respect with uh between each team. There was a lot of respect. How can there not be? I mean, yeah. you know, they were two really great teams and, um, you know, they highlighted the differences that, you know, our guys were the very beginning of an era of greatness for Plainview. And these guys were, you know, had already been indoctrinated in, yeah. you know, the fact that we could hold our own against these guys. I mean, it was pretty, it was awesome. I really, really yeah. enjoyed it. And I loved, um, you know how they both teams gave each other props, and um, that was beautiful. Yeah, it really was. It, 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 it really was, and and hopefully, you know, the next one we're going to have like this will be Her the Hereford and Plainview. Uh, hopefully, we can get that going as well because uh, it, it was a lot of fun. I thought it was going to be uh, a lot of chaos, uh, but it wasn't. It, it, it was these. I, I, you know what? If you, I think if we would have interviewed them f like a year, f a few years after the actual game, uh, it, it would have been different kids. It would have been kids talking shit. Talk, you know what I mean? But you know these were, were, these guys are in the mid sixties, and you know uh, they're humble. A uh, lot of life. You know, you know yeah. they've, they've had a lot of experiences, probably you know hardships and humbling experiences, and. I think they're at an age where there is nothing but respect at this point. It's like, absolutely you know, to share these memories. Yeah. What a treat. It's a, yes. this was a long show. Yes, it was. So let's say good night, but Hey guys, in two weeks, I think we have uncle nasty on the show. I think only a few people uh, from plan you know who uncle nasty is. It's Greg Harding. He's a, uh, he uh, became a DJ. Or he may still be a DJ. So I guess is one of the questions we'll ask him. But uh, uh, we'll have we'll have him on in a couple of weeks. So thanks, guys. Thanks, Lisa. Thanks. Okay. See y'all soon. Peace and love, guys. Peace and love.